All right. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the first session of our Masks TPRG, which is titled Clockwork. Um, we've got four amazing players here. I'm going to let them introduce themselves, give them a second to tell you more about them, where you can find them, and then a little bit about their character. So we're going to start over with Sin. So take it away, Sin. Hi, I'm Sin, or potato9 underscore juice, or on Instagram, are not art, or are not comics, and are not comics on Twitter. And if you want to get real confusing, it's Titania Creates on YouTube. Um, I create art. I like potatoes. And my character that I'm playing today is Shadow, the delinquent. Next. Go oh, Hatter. All right. I am no hat Hatter. I can be found. Wait, can you hear me? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> okay. I was like, I can be found. Dot, dot. Uh, okay. Uh, no. Uh, no hat hatter. I can be found on Discord and mostly in other people's streams. I don't stream myself. I leave that to the professionals. Um, I'm playing uh, the Doomed, and my character's name is Cleric. Next. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Warwick Zero. Warwick or Onion Lord, I guess. That's a new one, actually. The Onion Lord. Um, yeah, most people should know me uh, from Twitch, uh, either in Tufts Twitch or my own, and various other social networks. You can find me. It's my name, Warwick Zero. Except for Instagram. I have to have Warwick Zero Twitch. So I think someone's got Warwick Zero. But anyway, um, I'm playing uh, 13, um, or the actual character name is Xavier Lynch, and, and playing the Harbringer. And yeah. All right, Backwin. I am the Backwin. Um, I, that's my Twitch, and all of my other social handles are completely different because people take my name a lot. Um, on Instagram, I am the Backwin Lives, and on Twitter, I am the Backwin with two E's. Um, yeah. You can find me on Twitch or those places, or hanging out in Warwick or Tufts thing or other places. And what's your character? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's the Night Fox. Who is the Janus, correct? That's I, I don't know how to pronounce that, but apparently <laughs> Americans say Janus and British speakers say Janus, so I have no idea. I'm going to go with Janus because I feel like Janus is going to get us a lot of sad jokes. <laughs> Um, and I am your narrator, <laughs> Tough 98 Tough Love. Obviously, you're on my channel. You probably know who I am. I have also been being a bit more active on Twitter at 98 Tough Love as well. And uh, Janus and Uranus. Yep, you're right, Meg. Uh, and yeah, today we are running our first ever Masks TTRPG. So it's pronounced Janus. Oh, okay. I'm still going to wind up calling it Janus, I feel like. Janus also just sounds like a name, though. Janus the Janus. It's Janus. <laughs> this is what it's going to be like the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So the setting that we find ourselves in in Masks is in Halcyon City, which is a large, bustling city that is, oddly enough, home to a surprising amount of powered people. Nobody really knows why or how or what draws these people in, but this city sees more supers than any other city in the world, which means that it also sees more supervillains, more aliens, more robot threats, more monsters, and whatever else you can name that causes tragedies throughout people's lives. Uh, however, because they do have superpower people, things tend to be relatively okay and normal people can just go about their lives. Um, so today we are focused on our four heroes who are a team. Um, we are going to kind of go through those characters, let you guys get to know them a little bit more before we actually launch into the story. Um... I have like five million sheets open and I just have to find <laughs> which one I need. <laughs> Do I need 
to be writing things down. If you want to. <laughs> there's going to be a test up there. Yeah, there's going to be a test. Multiple <laughs> yeah. choice. And with a, a short answer essay. Um, oh. <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> all right, let me get your, your playbooks open. All right. Shadow, let's start with you. So you are the delinquent. Uh, so you're a bit of the not-so-nice person. You're willing to break the rules. You don't really care about any of that. But you're still doing good, all things considered. Um, another thing to know, all of you are teenagers. So you're not adults. You are just barely coming into your powers. You're barely learning how to use them. Um, you all also attend the Parasol School, uh, which is a joke for Umbrella Academy, um, where you study your powers, you, uh, go on field trips, you take tests, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like Teen Titans or Young Justice, if you guys have seen those, um, or Umbrella Academy, something, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so, uh, Shadow, uh... There are some backstory questions, most of which you have answered, but the chat does not know this, so we're going to start with uh, your backstory. So how did you get your powers? So I was actually born with them, but I didn't fully uh, like come into them later in life, but... So I thought I was not powered, like I didn't have powers for a long time, and then I discovered them. And my powers are that I can create illusions and teleport. So that's fun. <laughs> um, Just kind of as a follow-up question to that, just for the sake of curiosity, were either of your parents powered that you know of? Uh, my father was not powered, but I think my mother was, but I don't know who my mother was because she died during childbirth. And so because of that, my father blames me for the loss of his wife. So he doesn't care about me. All right. Um, and then what? What? What do you do for fun? I like to go into places where I technically shouldn't be, like restricted places, uh, age restricted places, just things that, like, places that say you should not go or you can't go tells me that I can't go there, I'm gonna go there. Alright. I just make myself look older to go in, or just teleport in. Oh, who's gonna stop me? Yeah, who's gonna stop me, man? <laughs> that I is can the just question. bounce out. Yeah, there you go. Just bounce out before they, they come, you know? Yep, shadow pushes the button. Um. Alright, so who outside of the team thinks better of you than you do? So growing up, I had a childhood friend named Kano. Uh, he was the son of someone who worked for my father. And so we were really good friends, childhood friends. Uh, I, I thought of him as almost a sibling until I started to, I don't know, grow feelings for him but then of course I can't tell him that uh, because if he doesn't like me like that then it just ruins everything but he moved away uh, before we started going to the academy so he's no longer here I don't know where he is but yeah I think he knows me more than I know myself yeah. Would you say that he's the reason that you're trying to be a hero, or is there another motive? Yeah, he's definitely the reason why I'm trying to be a hero. 
Uh, he just makes the world a better place with me. Uh, but also, I I want to be a hero to spite what my father wants because he wants me to go into business so that I can one day take over the family business. But uh, yeah, he doesn't love me, so just gonna do the thing that he doesn't want me to do. Heck yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love that teenage rebellion. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So then why why this team? Why do you care about them? What about these people drew you in? Why why do you stick around? Well, I know what it's like to not feel loved. I know what it feels like to be alone and I just I don't want anyone else to feel that way so I won't tell you that I actually like you I won't tell you that I think we're friends but I won't tell you that uh that I actually care for you but I do like <laughs> yeah so I don't want them to feel like they're ever alone. I don't want them to feel like nobody loves them and stuff. Because I know what that feels like, and I don't want anyone else to feel that way. Awesome. So when your team first met, and the rest of you also kind of need to keep this in mind, because I know that some people were trying to fill out this part, um, but you guys kind of have to build off of each other because this is when all four of you came together. So, I mean, whatever you put, we can probably link it in, but that's why I said, like, it's okay if some spots get left blank. Um, but, Sin, when, or Shadow, when our first team, when your team first came together, you totally broke some major rules to win the fight. Win the fight. What rules did you break, and whose rules were they? Uh, oh, no. so... So, we weren't supposed to use uh our powers to to do things like our instructor told us to to win this fight without using our powers but uh I said F this and use them anyways and I totally destroyed a whole lot of stuff which you're not supposed to anyways too because yeah destroying might something's have, bad apparently <laughs> I, I, I also might have thrown someone out a window he jumped out a window <laughs> yeah he, he totally fell by himself it's fine he, <laughs> he lived it's okay he just, just had a few broken bones cool it's that's fine just a scrape he didn't have to cry about it <laughs> <laughs> all right so among the team who is it that you're trying to impress whenever you pull off these stunts like throwing somebody out a window or making elaborate illusions like who who here is it that you're trying to to show off for uh i think and if you don't have answers to these questions yet either, we can come back to it once we introduce the other characters a little bit more. I think I would be trying to impress uh, a cleric. Okay. Because they seem cool. Yeah. I want to be friends with them, like closer friends. I want them to think that I'm cool too. Cool, cool. All right. And then... Um... You and someone else on the team pulled an awesome, maybe illegal stunt together. Who on the team did you do that with? Uh, I think that would be uh, Night Fox. Because uh, he like uh, snuck into the zoo one night and hung out with the penguins. It's pretty nice. Love it. It's very great. I think Night Fox not yeah. approves. <laughs> it's after hours too, so there's like nobody around. Yeah, it was a great night. And they uh, just teleported us out in the morning before people came in. So okay, we never got caught. 
Um, that you begs hear this from me. <laughs> that begs the question. Then Nightfox has Shadow met Taylor. Um. Yes. Okay. All right. And then, um, so if you go to the character sheets in, uh, you will see the influence section. Um, you care way more than you let on, so you need to give all of your teammates influence over you. Because it says three, but there's only three others, so. Um, you'll just put their character name, and then under, uh, on you, you'll mark that. And then if everybody wants to add shadow influence on them into the influence section. All right. Um, is there anything else about Shadow that you would like to share with us soon? Uh, Shadow was born into a wealthy family that uh, where her mother created a business that sells uh, and makes uh, special specialized weaponry that can be used against powered people or that can be used to help assist in defending off countries. The weaponry is specifically made for militaries, like for the military stuff, but it also gets into the hands of the people on the black market and you can find them in the black market as well. Cool, cool. All right, Cleric, you are the doomed, which means that you know that you have a doomed fate and your powers are tied into that. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your powers and when you first learned about your doom and how they're, they are tied into it. Quick question. Yes. Were we sent to Parasol School after we got our powers? Or after finding out about our powers? Yes. So even if you were in some sort of accident later on and were not born with powers, the Parasol School would have found you and recruited you into the school. It's kind of... There's also the government agency of Aegis that keeps an eye on that sort of stuff. So if they found out about that, they'd probably try to get you into the Parasol School because that is the school for supers that teaches you how to use your powers and so on and so forth because they don't want you going off on the wrong track. Yeah, I got it, I got it. I just wanted to make sure my backstory was still accurate. Yes, yeah, that still works. Okay, cool. So, uh, backstory is that uh, I want to be a doctor. I have wanted to be a doctor for as long as I can remember. Uh, my dad was really sick when I was young, and it was the doctors who brought him back from the brink of death. And so they're heroes, and that makes me want to be one, too. Um, so I did everything I could to get into the pre-med magnet high school with the, my sights set on getting into a scholarship to get go to school, uh, college, and get a medical degree. And, of course, having a whole bunch of uber smart kids stuck together in one building, crazy things happen. So there was a lab one day. And our goal was to speed up the process of some daisies. And the class clown wasn't taking the assignment very seriously. And some spilled chemicals and exposed wire. And boom, the lab blew up. So Greg and I got hit with the blast. And it did something weird to both of us. Uh, so for me, what I see is it looks like everyone is glowing. Um, like they're backlit by some light source. Uh, I can even see the glow through walls sometimes if they're thin enough. Uh, in general, kids glow very bright, adults less so, and the elderly pr look practically normal, like what I remember them looking like. Um, but shortly after that happened, I saw my dad, uh, who had gone into remi uh, remission. Wait, am I thinking of that right? As 
I had cancer again, which I think is remission. <laughs> uh, was very, very low, very uh, dull. And so I reached out and tr decided, tried to heal him. Like, just wanted to give my energy to him because he seemed low. And it worked. <laughs> but in the process of healing him, I found that I had used all of my energy. Um, so my... I have powers. I can help heal people. But it's very much tied to my own life force. So I have to be very careful with how I use it. All right. So you mentioned Greg. Uh, who is Greg and what's your relationship with him? How does What does it look like? Greg is my nemesis. Uh, he was just, like I said, the class clown while everybody else was trying to take things seriously. He was just causing ruckus. His dad was a famous doctor, so he was guaranteed a spot anywhere, and everybody... He was kind of like the Draco Malfoy of the prep school. Just really annoying. But he got hit with a blast, and so he's got pretty much the exact same powers as me, as far as I can tell. But he is not using them well. Instead of using them to help people, he's using them to hurt people. Like, he's realized he can pull life force from others... And if people don't do what he says, he's hurting them. And so I do not like Greg. Greg is bad. All right. So you you oppose him because he kind of is the antithesis of what you stand for. Instead of helping and healing people, he hurts and takes away. Exactly. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, so you have a sanctuary. Where where did you get that? Why is it your sanctuary? And do other people know about it? And are they allowed there? Um, my sanctuary is a garden that it was near the hospital uh, when my dad was in it first, when he first had cancer. Um, and we would go into the garden on his good days, and it would just be very nice. It is kind of a public garden, though, so there are other people that go uh, occasionally. But since the accident, I love going there because I can just be surrounded by life without seeing all the bright lights <laughs> and can just relax. Okay. Would you say that you guys would maybe use that as a like kind of a common meeting spot for this team? Like you would meet up in the garden before you go out on missions or anything like that, or or no? I don't know, actually. I feel like that would kind of defeat the purpose. I prefer the garden with no other people in it. Okay. Though, it also would be nice to make sure my teammates are okay before we go off and do something. So, eh. I'm 50 I mean, 50 on it right so, now. So, maybe it's not a meeting place, but maybe after particularly rough battles, hard missions, long day at school, you guys maybe meet up there for just to hang out and recharge. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, so, who outside of the team do you think is crucial to defeating your nemesis? Greg. And if you need to wait on that, we can also listen to other people's and see if you want to drag in characters from their stories, or we can brainstorm someone right now. Um, well, I was just thinking that group, uh, Aegeus? Aegis? I think. Aegis. Um, Aegis is trying very hard to take down Greg. Um, they tried to get him into the Parasol Academy, but... He's already gone off on a life of crime, basically, and is thwarting their every moment movements. Uh, so Aegis is trying very hard to track him down and bring him down, so I think they're going to be my best source to with that. <laughs> okay. Um, let's say that they have assigned a specific agent to this case. So they have... There's somebody within Aegis that, like, maybe you're not working with them directly, but you know of them and you've run into them in cases where you have gone to fight Greg and try to stop him from doing what he does. Um, so let's kind of brainstorm what that might look like. Um, would they be powered? 
I'm going to say no. Okay. Kind of like an Agent Coulson kind of thing. Okay. All right. Um, so how, how are they helping you? Are they just, is it just the resources that they provide with Aegis? Do they have a tie to this case? Like, are they related to Greg somehow? Or they just got kind of slotted this case number and, and showed up? I'm thinking, sorry. You're good. <laughs> And like I said, we can always come back to this if you need a little bit more time to think about it. Um, and if you just want to jot down any ideas that you have, then we yeah, can do that not, too. I like the idea of it just being a random agent that was slotted. This character is like, hey, there's this teenage a guy with powers. We got to get him to the Parasol Academy. You're an intern. Make it happen. <laughs> it was supposed to be an easy job, and it has turned into a very much not easy job. Okay. Would you say that Aegis is still just trying to get Greg to go to the Academy, or has he done enough to warrant imprisonment? Right now, they're still trying to get him into the Academy. Uh, most of the stuff that he's done is just kind of bully things. Um, annoying, but not criminal. Okay. Um, okay. And then uh, let's give a, a name to this... Uh this agent would they be uh masculine feminine non-binary uh feminine okay and do you have an idea for a name for them or do we want to just kind of throw something out there i've got nothing <laughs> <laughs> all right uh Oh. Brain no worky. Uh, <laughs> <ESC>. <laughs> Brain not found. Uh, how about Agent Ida? Ida works. Sorry. Thanks, Waffles. Are we having a good time in here? Always <laughs> a good time with Tuff, am I right? Uh, alright, sorry, I just need to write this down so that I don't, I don't forget names. Okay. Um, and then why why does the team matter to you? Um, well, I thought to be a hero I'd have to wait till after med school. But with this power that I've gained, I can help people now and I'm seeing my teammates also doing everything they can to help people now. Um so this team matters to me that together we can do good now rather than having to wait till later. Okay. All right. And then, so when your team first came together, uh, it's been established that it was a school mission. Uh, you guys wound up using your powers. So what was the cost for your victory? Um, I mean, like, did you wind up expending more life force than you meant to? Was it just reprimandations at school? Did you lose privileges from the school? Did I think I used more life force than I expected. Okay. Um, somehow one of the guys fell down the stairs and got really beat up and I had to stabilize him. <laughs> you went to go save could. the guy that fell out the window. Yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> um, and so it was a lot more hurt than I expected when I first came up to him. So healing him, I used more life force than I expected. Okay. Um, do you think you would have shared that with the team? Or would it have been noticeable that you had kind of expended yourself a bit more than you meant to? Uh, maybe a little noticeable. Uh, probably have seemed kind of like I had the flu for a few days while I was recovering. Um, definitely was drinking lots of... Uh, orange juice and <laughs> trying to lay low, but oh, moving a lot slower. <laughs> okay. All right. So your relationships with the team, you've told someone on the team about your doom. You know that 
it's coming, uh, and you're in danger. Who is it, and why did you tell them? I, I would like to wait until after I hear more about 13 and the Night Fox before I figure out influence at that school. Uh, so this isn't influence, this is just to establish pre-existing relationships with the characters, but we can also wait on that too, if you would like to. Yeah, just so I know a little bit more about the people. I think I'll have a better idea of who I... Okay, and then um, you will be giving influence to two, two teammates, so uh, as we go along, try to think of who those people would be. Uh, okay. All right, 13, the Harbinger. Hello. So you are from a doomed future. You know how things turn out. You have come back on a mission to stop that from happening, but your memories are a little bit fuzzy on what exactly has happened. You do know what your future looks like, and you have an idea of what the catalyst is that caused what happened. You don't know the events leading up to that, and you don't know the events after, but you have an idea in your mind of, like, this is the moment that caused everything to go wrong. So ha, let's let's kind of backtrack a little bit and we'll get back to that. But how how is it that you managed to get from the future back to the past? Like what in your powers gave you the ability to do that? Um, it's through bloodline. Um, my name 13 is actually the 13th descendant of, of my family. Um, and we've always been time travelers. Um, but I've never also seldom used my powers uh, because my father always said, don't use your powers. Nothing good can come from those powers. And I, I always question why, always question why. And I was just like, come on, why not? Uh, but he f forbade it. Um, but with the world as it is, I felt I had to do something. And so I tried and a bit of tinkering and sort of concentrating, I found myself in the time zone that we are in now okay. um not totally sure how i got here um all i remember is that i need to hopefully help stop what's going to happen okay what it is i can't remember all right um and what are your powers by the way because i don't remember if i ever actually asked you that <laughs> um powers are basically teleportation um and sort of portals and stuff just adding that to your extras so i don't forget yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so what is it that's stopping you from returning to the future? I feel in of basically the work is never done, uh, with my memory sort of scrambled of not sort of really trusting what I remember and can't remember. All I know is if I try to keep doing good, hopefully that will set a course of action, which will hopefully help the future or my my present um but i just don't know how much i need to do so i'm just gonna keep going and just until i feel like i'm 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 done okay um so why do you think your memories and your knowledge is so scrambled do you think that it's because you technically don't exist in this time so you just can't recall memories that don't exist yet do you think it's something to do with like how you got back to the past was it your powers was it like what do you what do you think it was honestly i think it's a combination of things i'm not really used to the powers that i've had i've also been told not to use them um and going as far as i did um I didn't think to be going as far back as I have um, because I'm in a time that I don't currently exist. Um, so I've gone at least, well, let's say, 18, 19 years in, into the past. Um, and with anything like time traveling, I'm in a, in a place where I shouldn't exist. And I think with that, my memories and everything else just can't really make any sense of the world. Um, there's little bits now and again, but even then, I can't really trust what is my past or my present or this future. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So let's talk a little bit about the future. What is it that is the current in, in your most recent memories of your future? What is it that you're trying to stop? Basically the apocalypse, basically the world as, as we know ending um, it's still there, but, it's pretty much in ruin. Um, and while there's been a combination of things, um, there was one 
event that sort of concluded everything basically and to where where the world is now okay um so why this team what is it about this team that you made you join them and decide to stick with them to thwart this apocalyptic future um all, all i remember is reading like textbooks uh, textbooks or just knowing of the names you know of cleric or shadow of night fox and while my memory fails me a lot uh, in real life and in game uh, <laughs> I know that these names names mean something, and I remember just happened to sort of know, just almost just find them at at the school, you know, basically asking around, finding these sort of these heroes to be uh, that I know of them or knew of them, uh, and just knowing that having this group will help and hopefully give us the best chance of preventing what's to happen. Um, they called me out, Jesse. I called myself out, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, just kind of for more curiosity's sake, um, what what do you believe is the catalyst that caused your future? Like, was it? I mean, you could tie it into Shadow's father's weaponry. You could say Greg went on a rampage. It could be somebody on this team. It could just be a totally different event that you guys just couldn't stop. Maybe an alien invasion. Like, there's there's tons of options of what could have happened, at least for that one catalyst. Yeah. I I, I feel like it'd be some some related to Shadow's father. Okay. So maybe um, that's part of the reason you joined the team too, is that you knew Shadow. Yeah, I feel I feel like Shadow. I've heard of the names, but I think Shadow would have been something that stuck in my head, and it's a bit fuzzy why. But I believe I would have think the Catters would have been involved in Shadow's father in some way. Okay. All right. Um. Okay. So. When the team first came together, you guys managed to avert a disaster from the future's history books. What was that? Di what was that disaster, and what effect did it have on the timeline? So we know it started off as a school mission. We know that cleric wound up overexerting themselves because somebody fell out a window. Um, what happened there that wound up making it such an extreme situation? not sure i guess um <laughs> i guess in saving that person um i would have let's say they would have died in my time timeline um and that would have been like a snowball effect where someone related to that person i guess was high up in some military power or something and waged vengeance and then it just started like a catalyst okay potentially um, maybe we can say to tie it in with Shadow's father as well that because it was a hero that caused this person to die, very important person as we now know, that it surged the black market for anti anti hero weaponry, um, and potentially caused a boom in that industry that potentially could lead to your future. Good to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay, so Cleric kind of sort of helped avert the apocalypse. Good job, Cleric. Sweet. <laughs> Wooden <laughs> day's work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then, so your relationships with other people. Um, there is yeah. a member on the team that turns away from the hero's path according to your history books, and you have to prevent that from happening. Who on the team uh, goes off the path? Uh, I would believe that'd be Shadow. Okay. I'm not picking on you, Shadow. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes sense. It, it works. Sense. It works. <laughs> um, All good. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have always idolized someone on the team, but it's kind of awkward to admit it to them now that you've met them in real life. So who is it on the team? And just remember, keep it cool, keep it cool. 
Uh, it'd be it'd be Night Fox, I believe. All right. Just being able to be friends with the penguins. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. And then every member of the team has the power to change your future. So everyone has influence over 13. If you guys want to add that to the influence box um, on your character sheets. And then... Uh, is there anything else about 13 that we should know about? Anything else about the future, your mission, anything like that that you would like to add, 13? Um, just that my pronouns are any with the, with the character. Um, cool. I go by 13 or Xavier. Um, and... Uh... I try to be too cool sometimes, or try to show off now okay. and again. <laughs> All right, I like it. Because I'm from the future, and I'm trying to go, hey, <laughs> I'm from the future. It's me. Well, actually, um, no, wait. Actually, that does bring up the question. It's does me. Does the team know that you are from the future? Are you... From the future. <laughs> <laughs> um... I couldn't hear any laughing. I hope it was laughing, because I haven't got my headphones on. Um... <laughs> Yes, there was laughter. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta cool. adjust my lighting. Um, so that, <laughs> that does beauty. bring up the question, do, does the team know that you were from the future? Are you open about that? Or yes. do you try to hide it? Okay. I'm very open about it. it um, I think being the teenager, um, or Rick or Xavier, I would be like, hey, this is cool. I've done a thing. I'm a time traveler. You know, I've got the shades to prove it, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool, cool, good to know. All right. uh, influence. What might what may add in? Sorry, quickly. Um, everybody has influence over you, so all of your teammates will have influence. Same with Shadow. Uh, even though Shadows is specifically only three, not all, but that's yeah. you know, all you can do. Um, all right, Night Fox. Uh, you are the Janus. You kind of spent a lot of your life kind of caught in a rut. You have the same routine, you do the same stuff, you live a normal life, but there's these moments when you get to step out of that. You put on the mask and you become a hero, something that is out of the ordinary, um, and something that you can just be. You don't have to hide behind... I mean, you're hiding behind a mask, but you're not hiding behind anything else. You're not hiding behind monotony or routine or, you know, anything like that. Um... So, when did you first put on the mask, and why? Uh, I put on my mask uh, when I moved to the city. I didn't always live here. Um, I sought a way for to break away from the shackles of the my mundane life. Okay. Um, and then kind of your big thing is that you you keep a secret identity, and I mean it's not uncommon for the supers to have secret identities. I mean, you don't want, you know, especially if you have like a family or something like that, you don't want people like coming and attacking them. But you you keep yours like super down low. There are very 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 few people that know about your identity. So why do you keep it? What about it is so important? Um, you know, it's just uh I want to keep everything separate. I don't want to get everything all tangled up together. So it's kind of like in your mundane life, you keep work and uh, personal life separate. You don't want them bleeding together too much. All right. Uh, so, who is it outside of the team that knows about your secret identity? Uh, outside of the team, uh, the only ones that know my secret are the penguins at the zoo. Um, they've sworn an alliance to me to never give it up. Perfect. I love it. Um... And who is it that thinks the worst of your masked identity? Like, whether that's someone that knows that you have a dual life, or whether that's somebody that just doesn't like your mask. Who do you think is that person? So this person does know my secret identity. Um, his name is Taylor. He is one of the uh, um, surly, uh, he's a surly uh, rockhopper penguin at the zoo. Um, he... He goes to the edge of the cage, and he's able to kind of talk with the bears. I don't know if you know this, but bears and penguins, they're not really, they're not great together. Um, so 
there's that. He knows sign language, so he could technically tell the zookeeper who I am. So he's kind of trying to lording it over me. He's a bit of an asshole. Damn Taylor. Um, all right. So then why why do you care about the team? What about these people draws you in? What makes you stick around? Why why these people? Um, so it seems like most of them care about me being there and helping them out. I can't really read Shadow at all, but that's okay, I guess. Um, plus they kind of understand that we all have these gifts, these powers, and how to kind of deal with them. Okay. So, when the team first came together, you saved the life of someone important, uh, either to the city or to you guys. Why are they important, and who was it? Um, from what I remember from the incident, I mean, there was a lot going on. Somebody fell out a window or something, and uh, um, I think clerics healed them, didn't yes. save I don't know. It, it was a lot going on, but um, I remember it being the life of uh, like an important city official, um, like a, either a politician or somebody with finance, some sort of money connection, um, but that's about it. Uh, maybe we say it was actually the mayor of Halcyon City that wound up being saved after getting pushed out of a window. Um, so that was a, a bit of a big deal and definitely could have caused a stir if Cleric hadn't managed to save them. All right, so your relationships. Who in the team knew you from your civilian life first? Um... I think that would be a uh, cleric. Okay. How do you think you guys would have known each other? Um. Well, cleric uh, before this was going to be pre-med, so I probably got injured at some point. Okay. So you were hospitalized. Okay. Sure. And that's how you guys met. Yeah. All right. And then you refused to tell someone on the team your secret identity when they asked, who would you not tell? Um, I probably wouldn't tell 13. Okay. Any yeah. particular reason why? Well, I mean, uh, he already stated his power is time travel, and I feel like <laughs> if they know who I am, they can look up everything about me. I don't really want to have all that information because it's a lot of anxiety. Okay. All right. I would. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I can I own a clock? <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so you look up to your teammates because they kind of have been maybe doing this a little bit longer. They're a bit more established. Maybe, I mean, one of them's from the freaking future. Uh, one of them saves somebody's life. Uh, shadow is shadow and just kind of gives off that air regardless. Um, so two of your teammates have influence over you. So which two are, are going to have influence? Um... I would say cleric for one, and probably shadow for the other. Okay, so if you guys want to mark that, um, cleric and shadow, and also, oh god, Google Sheets, um, Nightbox, if you also want to mark it in yours. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so jumping back to cleric. Uh, what do you think, uh, who do you think you told about your doom and the danger that you're in out of all of your teammates? Probably the Night Fox. Okay. Uh, not sure why, they just seem very trustworthy. Person with a secret identity. <laughs> <laughs> all right yep yeah i mean they're already really good at keeping secrets so if i figure <laughs> there you go all right and then you'd love to kiss someone on the team before your doom comes who on the team is that oh my <laughs> yeah, no, no pressure <laughs> well they're all just so cute um <laughs> I think I'm going to go the Night Fox again, just because I have that trust with him already. Okay. All right. And then you need to give influence to two of your teammates. Who are the two that you think would have influence over you? 
Oh, well, night fox. I mean, if I want to kiss them, then they're definitely going to have influence over me. Going to be doing stupid shit to uh, impress <laughs> them. Um, and then probably 13, just because I'd be like, whoa, you're from the future and just want to do everything I can to make that future a bright one. Okay. Perfect. I love it. All right. So we have pretty successfully established you guys as characters. We've got your relationships figured out, why your team came together. Um, so just as a minor recap for anybody that joined in late, we have Shadow, who is the daughter of a wealthy CEO who fabricates uh, anti-superhero weaponry. Um, she is a delinquent who is... Uh, Kind of just really likes going and doing bad stuff, breaking into places, using their powers for whatever they want. Um, they do have, they are a hero despite all of this, thanks to a childhood best friend. Um, and then they keep trying to impress Cleric and. Oh, who did who did you pull a stunt with? Was it Night Fox? It was Night Fox. Okay, yeah. We hung out with the penguins. That's right, you guys hung out with penguins. So uh Shadow has a bit of an insight into Night Fox's uh <laughs> penguin antics. Uh then we have Cleric who is doomed. Uh his powers are the ability to heal, but at the cost of his own life. Um, he was in a hospital accident, which also gave the class clown Greg the same powers. Greg is not using those powers for good and is currently being hunted by Aegis, specifically Agent Ida, who is the key to Cleric defeating Greg and bringing him in. Um, and then... Uh... Night Fox is kind of Cleric's uh, fixation. Uh, the two of them, uh, Night Fox knows all about Cleric's doom and the danger that they're in, the rest of the team not so much. And Cleric also wouldn't mind getting a little bit of a smoochy smooch before they kick the bucket. Um, and then we have 13, who is the Harbinger, a person from the future, uh, an apocalyptic future. Uh, they are back trying to stop that from happening. Um, their belief is that Shadow's father and his anti-superhero weaponry is going to potentially cause this future, so they're trying to find ways to stop this, uh, these weapons from really taking off enough to cause something so terrible. Um, and they also believe that Shadow is potentially going to turn from the hero's path, and they are trying to stop that. And they have always you idolized cleric. I can't remember now. Um, <laughs> or was it no, Night it was Fox? Night Fox. Oh, it was Night Fox. No, it's Night Fox because yeah, the penguins. Because of the penguins. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yep. 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 All right. Uh, it was the penguins. <laughs> so yeah, you're maybe a little bit kind of like hee 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 he around Night Fox. You got like a little fan club over here, Night Fox, between thirteen and cleric. <laughs> <laughs> they're like fight. Oh. <laughs> fight uh and then we have night fox the janus who kind of uses this superhero thing to break out of the monotony of everyday life um night fox is newer to the city hasn't necessarily grown up here night fox is very good friends with the penguins at the zoo except for taylor who's a little bit of an asshole um, and then Cleric knew Night Fox from their civilian life first because Cleric was in pre-med and Night Fox was in the hospital. Um, and then they refused to tell 13 their identity, uh, when they first met, which is interesting. Um, also, with your secret identity, Night Fox, what is your job? What is it in your school that you need to keep up with? What is your home life and your social? What are the four things that you are trying to keep up with alongside your superhero duties? Um, That is a good question. So you need to pick three. I, <laughs> I definitely figured that out some time ago. 
I think you wrote uh, it down on the the sheet that you sent me, but I just I did. just so that everybody else knows. Um, I think it said at least that you were a wait a waitress. Yes, yes, I'm playing a waitress. Okay, and then you have to do household chores, and you are part of the photography club. Cool. Yep, that sounds right. All right. Cool, 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 cool. Um, and then, oh, and powers. Shadow has illusions and teleportation. Cleric has life absorption, uh, which allows them to heal. Uh, 13 also has teleportation abilities. And then Night Fox has webs and energy absorption. All right. Is there anything else you guys would like to establish before we get started? Oh, I've got psychic constructs, too. Oh, are you using the psychic constructs, too? Yes, I would like to. Okay, cool. I wasn't sure if you were actually going to add that or not. <laughs> cool, cool. Love it. Yes. I think it'd be fun and something other than just going around and be like, I heal you! <laughs> yeah, uh, no, that's that's good. All right. Um, let me get my final sheet open. If we, if there's two of us got both teleportation and portals, would it make sense to have a different one? I mean, if you want to change your powers, I'm fine with that. But you can also keep them. It's not going to hurt anything to have duplicate powers. Energy of absorption slash re redirection, would that be basically like Dragon Ball Z type stuff? Uh, so that's kind of up to you. The powers are pretty... Their limits are set only by what you can imagine, basically. So as long as you can come up with a reason for why it can do that, then you can do that. This is cool. <laughs> I mean, maybe maybe a little bit more than that, but I mean, we're working on comic book logic here. There's, It's not going to be like super, like it has to be super scientific or anything like that. Um, I will say that is somewhat similar to Night Fox's powers as well as potentially clerics a little bit where you can absorb energy from people or you can draw it from like power sources and use that to redirect it into something else. Uh, or use it as like a beam or a giant energy ball or whatever the hell you want to do with that. What's everyone else got? Because Shadow's got... Shadow's got teleportation, teleportation. and yeah. illusions. Uh, Cleric has energy absorption and psychic constructs. And then Night Fox has webs and energy absorption. Uh, I'll go with super speed. Super speed? Okay. Classic super speed, yeah. All right, super fast. Super fast. Strong. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, in case anyone didn't know what the speed sounded like. <laughs> it's what, why I have the shades. <laughs> okay, I thought it was a really cool. Okay, never mind, it's fine. I like Carry it. On. Nope, it's good. It's good. <laughs> I need to write it down. <laughs> okay, so we we start off kind of the splash page of our our first issue uh entitled clockwork um the four of you are just starting to head to school you're all suited up you're ready to go um you're kind of just casually going on your way and then things start to get a little weird which isn't it's it's strange because it's not unusual for halcyon city for things to be weird something happens basically every single day here but this is a little bit more out of the normal. As you see, as you look up, there's a spot of black in the sky. And then you see that spot starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then all of a sudden, it's almost like you're in a giant dark dome. Like a dome of glass that is oh, tinted. Oh, already. <laughs> and... <laughs> Hi, Juice. <laughs> oh, hey, Thanks, thanks Juice. 19 months of best friendship. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as the dome starts to spread and it, like, things aren't pitch black, you can still see, it's just tinted. It's like a shadow has been cast over you, ironically enough, shadow. Um... <laughs> And as you guys are kind of standing there going, like, what is going on? Um, you have little communicators that keep you in touch with the school. 
And over the line, uh, Cleric, you recognize Agent Ida's voice as she comes on, and it's kind of crackly and cutting in and out, and you kind of just barely are able to make out that she's saying, Help, Aegis, quarters, now. And then it cuts, and the line goes dead. Oh, snappers. So what would you like to do? Hey, y'all, I think there's some issue over at the Aegis headquarters. We probably should go check it out. Are, are you sure, though? Because quarters could mean they're at the arcade. You know, while that is a good option, something tells me it actually means headquarters, and so they're, they're their main office. What's a quarter? It's it's a uh, um one fourth of a dollar. Got it, got it. I think I read about money. That's fine. Okay. Uh, quick question outside the character, the dome. How big is this dome? It's, is it over the city? It's over the entire city. Um, city. As got far it. as you can tell, it stretches. There's the city is uh it has a water side that leads to the ocean, so it is uh like kind of a seaport area. And it stretches to where you can still see some of the sea, and you're not sure if it cuts off farther out or if it's continuing to go. But as far as you can tell, it looks like it's just surrounding the city limits. Does this disturb any, like, technological things, like a coffee maker? So, as you guys are actually talking, some of the lights start to go out on the street. Kind of just one by one by one. What about then, a coffee maker? <laughs> I mean, I don't think you guys are near a coffee maker. Sure, you see a coffee maker in the <laughs> in somebody's window, and you see it kind of like <laughs> shake and then just sputter, and it's it's not working. <laughs> and then, to their knees. <laughs> uh, as you're left in darkness for a little bit longer, then all the lights start to pop back on again. Is is this is this normal? No, no, this is not normal. We have to do something about this. Um... Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> I said, I, I got a call from Aegis people. I think we should head to their headquarters. I think we might be able to help there. Did we hear what hear, hear what they said as well? Uh, yeah, just, so all uh... of you have communicators. Uh, Cleric oh, okay, just, so we'll just recognized that it was Agent Ida specifically on on the line. All right, well, let, let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's do this. All right. All right. Well, I hate walking, so let's teleport there. If Can we all possible. teleport? I just like grab them and just attempt to teleport. Okay. Um, I'm, also, already gone. Just, <laughs> I'm already gone. <laughs> just to, to keep you guys uh, in the loop, you do need 2d6. Those are the only dice that you will need for this game. Um, Shadow, with you trying to teleport your entire team, I'm going to say that that is an unleash your powers moment, so I'm going to need I you to... I will say, I've, I've, already, I've already legged it. Oh, so you're using your speed to get there? Yeah, basically what I'm going to do every time I'm going really fast is when I put the shades on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Alright, we're going to say that Aegis is actually a little ways away from you guys, and 13, you were not super experienced with using your powers, because you were kind of forbade from using them, so I'm also going to need an Unleash Your Powers roll from you, so you guys will be rolling plus Excellent. Freak. Uh, Shadow, let me get your roll for first, and we'll do that, and then we'll do 13s. Excellent. So let's free. Uh, Shadow, you got a 3? Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I got eight plus one, so that's no. nine. Oh, that's oh okay. <laughs> All right. So I uh, needed to know what the freak was. Yeah. Okay. Well, I thought you said you rolled a three, and I was like, oh, uh-oh. <laughs> no. um, okay. So you do do it. You are successful in teleporting your teammates. However, it's a little bit unstable. So as you open up the portal, and you've done this before with yourself, Shadow, you're you're used to going shorter distances, and you're used to only taking yourself. So trying to take three people and jumping such a large distance is not very easy. Um, and as you guys are kind of falling through this teleportation, uh, it it kind of makes you sick. It makes you you squeamish because it it's not 
functioning how it should. It's like trying to go down a slide and then you're doing loop-de-loops while the slide is shaking at the same time. Uh, so you guys come out of that portal extremely disoriented. And then Shadow, I'm going to need you to mark a condition. So, um, I'll, I'll let you kind of decide which one you think would fit best here. I would say that probably... I don't know. I'll let I'll let you tell me. Do you think you would be afraid, angry, guilty, hopeless, or insecure after this? Uh, maybe a little angry. Okay. I thought I could do it, and then failing, it's like, well, heck. So you're just kind of yeah. angry at yourself. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then, uh, all oh, right. That was mocked to night clocks. Oh, whoops, wrong one. Just double clicking. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so the three of you do arrive. Cleric and Nightbox, you're maybe a little bit woozy for a second, but you're you're able to regain your bearings. Um, Shadow, you're. You need to get a bicycle, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Shadow, you're pretty you're pretty upset with yourself. Uh, after that, because and and I'll say that maybe you're upset because you didn't get to really show off for Cleric that you had such masterful control of your powers. Um, all right, 13. Give me that roll. That's me running. Uh, was it 2d6, <laughs> was it? Yes, 2d6 plus your freak. Which I believe yours is a plus one. Seven. <laughs> a seven with the plus one? Overall. Seven. Overall. Okay. <laughs> all right, so... Which fits very well with my character. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you... You're like, yeah, psh, I got this. I don't need to be teleported. I got super speed. And you're, like, excited to, to be really? using this power. Um, and then you make it about halfway, and you're like, oh, man. Aegis is way farther than I thought it was. And then you get a little bit farther and a little bit farther. And by the time that you make it there, you are dragging. You are exhausted. You have pushed yourself pretty damn hard just trying to make it to these it's headquarters like, it's like glass is like half my face yeah so you're like <laughs> kind of like you just finished running a, a marathon without preparing for it and you're just kind of like hunched <laughs> over like <gasps> trying to I'm catch okay. your breath um i'm okay and and probably needing a pretty good snack after that burning up all them calories um Again, can I give um, him a little boost? Like, would I see that and be like, oh dear, and can I, like, pop him up a bit? I mean, narratively, you can. Uh, it's not going to affect anything character-wise. That is another thing to note, is that you guys don't have hit points. That you don't die, you don't go down. Like, you can take a powerful blow hard enough to knock you out, but heroes don't die, villains don't die, nobody dies. Is kind of one of the premises of this game. Um, so if narratively, yeah, we could have Cleric go over and be like, oh yeah, let me give you like a, a boost up there, bud, because you're looking a little low. Um, that would be totally fine. Okay. Yeah, I think I would. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Cleric, you go over and you, you, you kind of just like, you, you, I, I think you'd kind of like mask it kind of as like patting him on the back as you, you transfer a little bit of, of your life into him to kind of re-stabilize him. And then, um... How do you how do you think you would feel after that? Maybe maybe a little bit insecure about your powers, I would say. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to show off and then just come back in like a heap. No, I'm fine. <laughs> Absolutely, I'd be insecure. One hundred percent. Okay. So we'll mark. And that. also, I had to. Yeah, I can see what you mean with the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's one behind me. <laughs> All right, so you guys all arrive at Aegis headquarters, and the first thing that is very noticeable to you is that there are no lights coming from Aegis. It is dark, and you do not see anyone going in or going out. So what would you like to do? I'll say that you guys are outside of the headquarters. You haven't yet gone in, but normally, like, you guys don't go to Aegis very often, but sometimes you go on, like, class field trips just to go check it out. And it's a potential career path for you guys because they do employ supers in the agency, so that's a potential career 
Um, so we'll say that you guys have gone there once or twice, maybe in the time that you've been at the Parasol School. And normally there is at least like one or two people standing outside the door just to kind of check and to keep paparazzi away in case famous or more famous superheroes come by. And there's nobody there. So what would you like to do? I'll get my breath. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a doorbell? Um, <laughs> no, but you can try the door. <laughs> okay, I'm going to attempt to just kick the door. Okay, you're just going to walk in? You, yeah. you don't have to kick it, just try to open um, it first. <laughs> Shadow, wait a second. <laughs> don't just kick the door. We have to, like, like assess. Like, we've got a big dome above us. It's still there, yeah. Um, there's no lights on. Something's clearly going on. We might just want to just be a bit more careful. 13. And I'm guessing... It sounds like you maybe would like to assess the situation. I would like to assess the situation. All right. Roll plus superior. <laughs> and also just so it gives me more time to get my breath back. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So how do I... Is there a thing to do assess or... Um, so you roll plus superior. So your 2d6 plus whatever your superior is. Which yours is a plus one. Ten overall. You roll a ten. Awesome. So yes. if you go to the basic moves, you will see assess the situation. On a ten plus, you can ask two of those questions. So Ooh. what here can I use to blank? What here is the biggest threat? What here is in the greatest danger? Who here is most vulnerable to, vulnerable to me? And how best could we end this quickly? You can ask other questions that are kind of tied into that, but those are kind of just to, to give you a jump start. Yeah, yeah. Um, what here is the biggest threat? What here is the biggest threat? Um, as, you're, as you're looking around, it's pretty clear that the dome is of concern however whatever has caused Aegis to suddenly go dark is definitely the biggest threat you don't know exactly what that is yet oh also as Harbinger I think you can ask questions about what the future knows about this yes so if you Where's would my... like to know what the future knows about this rather than what is the greatest threat we could do that Or would that say oh, that? Oh no! Hang on. That's a uh, like... that's one of your what's that's one of your moves. So you have to stick to the mission and tomorrow's golden promise. Okay, never mind. That's... You cannot ask that question. You no, I can't because it would be one of my. Yeah, moves it's one of your moves. Tried, but... I wasn't sure if that was that's just fine. a part of the character. If that was yeah. a move. Um, but yeah, so greatest no, danger. Cool. Um, whatever has caused Aegis to go dark is a bit more concerning than the the dome. Uh, and the second question. Uh, yes, I am assessing the situation. Hi, Billy. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Billy. <laughs> um, what here is the greatest danger? What here is in the greatest danger? Uh, what here is the greatest danger? It, what? So, yeah, what here is in the greatest danger? Okay. Um, yeah. You're... <clears throat> As, as you're looking at the Aegis building, you're not really seeing, like, even without the lights inside of Aegis, there's still lights on the street that are on, and you're not seeing, like, any movement in there. So you're kind of getting the feeling that whatever is in the greatest danger here, it's probably going to be you guys. So your team is currently in the greatest danger at this moment. Makes sense. <laughs> Um, would I portray, would I say that to the group, or is that a case that you once you that, say it, that's everyone up to you. sort of knows? No, that's up to you if you share with the group. This is your insight only. Okay. Um, I will share the information that you shared with us, basically, so okay. everyone knows what we spoke about. Basically. All right. So, I mean, maybe it's kind of like, hey, I think that whatever's going on with Aegis is a big deal. But also, we'd be the only ones going in there, as far as I can tell. I don't think we're getting back up, and we could be in danger going in that building. Yeah. Cool. So now what do you guys want to do? Uh, I don't know what Shadow wants to do. <laughs> Who had a question? Yeah, um, 
I can see life force. So can I see like through windows and whatnot, um, people's life force, or do I not see any light at all inside the building? Um, you don't see any near the edge of the building. If you would like to try to see further in, that will be an unleash your powers. Uh, all right. Yeah, let me. Let me see what I can see, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, that didn't go well. So two... That was a uh, freak, I think. Yeah, 2d6 plus freak. Uh, seven total. Seven total. Okay. So you are successful, but you only catch a very, very brief glimpse. But you do see that there are supply forces inside. You can't really tell how many but you can tell that there are people in there. Okay. Uh, do I need to do a condition too? Yes. So what condition do you think you would mark here? Probably afraid. Okay. Go ahead and mark that. Um, and if you guys need to see what these conditions do, uh, it is in the moves and it's under conditions. So it'll tell you what you take. You'll take a minus two to a certain roll. Um, all right. Uh, I guess I tell everyone, hey, there are people in there. <laughs> so I think we should go in and try to help. Absolutely. I think we should. We just we have to just make sure we just take it easy. Take, take care. You know, we don't know what we're dealing with at the moment. So we just have to sort of just not rush in. And this, I, I look at Shadow, like still, like leg in the air, about to kick the door. <laughs> yeah, Shadow had a freeze frame moment where she, just, we, we, like we, we have the panel where uh, thirteen and, and cleric are kind of doing their thing, trying to figure it out. Like we catch the scene of cleric seeing the faint glimmer of lights in in the background, and we see thirteen looking around, like, okay, this is weird. I don't know how this is. I like, I don't feel this. This feels dangerous. Uh, and then we've got Shadow kind of just hobbling on one foot right next to the door. <laughs> just, like, ready to kick it in, but they stopped, like, right before they could. <laughs> so we, uh, we've been here before on field trips, you said? Yes. So, uh, would, uh, we know that, uh, if there's any, like, specifically locked areas that have something that we're not supposed to know about? Um, yeah, Aegis is full of secrets. So Aegis is kind of like the play on words for shield in this universe. Right. Um, right. so Aegis definitely has a lot of secrets and a lot of stuff that they don't want the public knowing about, let alone a couple of young teenage superheroes. So any tours that you were giving were very superficial and kept more to the outer parts of the building where it's more offices and like meeting other supers that are involved, meeting the agents, like more more glossy, rose-tinted glasses type of view rather than what Aegis is actually up to. So I just want to um, kind of reflect that to the team and be like, there's a lot of stuff in here we don't know about, and I don't know if the with the power being off that unlocks or locks those doors. So that could potentially be a problem, so we should probably all stick together. So I'll say, Night Fox, as you're saying that, you guys hear a crash. And you're not sure if it actually came, like, if it was something from inside the building leaping out, or if it was something inside the breaking building breaking, but you hear what sounds like shattering glass. Okay, I look really quick to 13 to make sure he didn't use any super speed to do this. 13 is still no, kind I'm, of doubled no. over, like, yeah, I'm still <laughs> like barely like... catching his breath. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Shadow I takes a step back. <laughs> Shadow's like, it, it wasn't, wasn't me. me. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone know where that came from? Um, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. If I was still looking Shadow. at the building, would I have seen anything? Um, No, you did not see anything. You guys all heard it, but nobody could see it. So it's coming from a different side of the building that you can't see, or it's coming from inside where you cannot see. Let's go check it out. I think we should probably just go in the building and see what we can find out in there, whether it's in yeah. there or not. You know, this is our primary thing we should deal with first. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, let's try to go in and try to get people out of there. Okay. 
so you guys head into the building. The front door is unlocked, which is also unusual because typically Aegis is on super lockdown unless you have authority to get in there as it is a government agency, but you guys are able to kind of just fuck the door right open. Shadow's ready to kick it in if necessary, but it's it's not. <laughs> and I just um, sort of just put it open and go after you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you all enter the building. You enter this large foyer. It's got the Aegis symbol emblazoned on the floor. Um, the only light that you're really getting is from outside through the windows, so it is pretty dark in here. Um, you don't see any shattered glass here. Uh, all you see is the front desk, and then to your left is like a metal detector, which kind of tells you that that is leading towards some more areas that you typically wouldn't be allowed into. And then to your right is more like offices, so it's rows of doors with like different agent names uh, stapled on it. So what would you like to do? Uh, would I know how to get to Agent Ida's office? Um... Yeah, let's say that you and Agent Ida have worked together. We'll say once before you guys teamed up to try to take down Greg, which is kind of what made you think that Ida would be your best chance at getting him under control. Um, so she did once take you to her office, which is to the right, and it's like three doors down on the left. Okay, since she was the voice I recognized on the communicator, I feel like that's the first place I'd like to check. Uh, so let's head to her office real quick. Makes perfect sense. Okay. All right, I will follow Cleric because I don't know where I'm going. Are you? I'll also follow. Okay. All right, yeah, all Hope four of you. Behind. You'll do what? Uh, I'll follow them, but I'll stay a bit behind. Okay. Just looking around. So Shadow's kind of trailing. All right, so um, Cleric, you lead the way to Agent Ida's office. Uh, the door is unlocked again. Um, all of these are kind of electronically secured, so any badge that you would have needed to get in is unnecessary. The door opens as soon as you touch the handle. Um, and you step inside. There is no one inside. Uh, everything seems to be in order. There's not, like, it doesn't look like there was a struggle. There's no sign that she was, like forced out there's no signs of abduction or anything like that it just looks like an office this is really weird i guess should we check the other anything. offices yeah okay um so do you guys want to split up and check out offices or are you all just going from door to door together in 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 the office it, was, it just looked like a normal office yeah, I mean, like, obviously, like, it's it's an Aegis agent office, but, I mean, it's mostly, yeah. like, filing cabinets. Uh, there's some some files on the desk and papers. Um, there's, like, a certificate that Agent Ida got from her university uh, in, a, in a plaque on the wall. Uh, some little desk toys. And then, like, a computer that is uh, not currently working. I just searched the desk. Yeah. Uh, Let's see if I can find anything, like in the in the like the the drawers or something. Um. Yeah. What? Um. Go for another assess the situation roll. Yeah. Which is I'm adding my superior to that. Yep. Hey, I'm learning. Excellent. <laughs> Six. With the superior? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you don't really... Anything that is on that desk is pretty... Like, obviously, like, their computer stuff is going to be way more encrypted, but whatever is on these papers, you can't really make out what they're trying to say. It's a bunch of code and mumbo-jumbo that just doesn't make sense in your brain. So there's not really anything on the desk that can help you. And with the computer shut down, you can't access any of those files either. So you kind of walk away empty handed. Oh, do I get condition as well? Nope, not on that one. Uh, well, I would be angry. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> what? You would just see um, like papers flying behind 13 as he furiously <laughs> rips through these drawers like, what does Alfred Bravo Condor mean? <laughs> 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 um, so you said uh, the computer's off? 
Yes, there are the lights are off. There doesn't seem to be any electricity power in this building. I would like to touch the uh computer to see if it's still warm. Um it is not. Huh. That's odd. I look at so, 13 because obviously he'd be the closest one to me. Yeah. So, uh, the, the computer's cold, which means it wasn't the the dome that turned it off. Oh, because it'd still be, it'd be warm if it It'd still be warm because whatever happened here would, you know, we got here as, as quick as we could. What's that mean? Maybe these paper people will say. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> To have papers. <laughs> um, quick, quick thing, actually, with that, uh, the communicators. How would the? Is it like a two-way? Is that like a radio? Uh, yeah. So it'd be kind of like having like a Bluetooth piece in your ear, sort of. Um, yours are not working anymore. After oh. that contact with Agent Ida, they cut out, and you are getting nothing. Oh, interesting. And w w would the agent use the computer to talk to us, or...? Um, she would have had her own communicator. I had her own, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, we didn't see that so... left behind. Nope. Okay. Cool. Uh, well, yeah, I can't see anything else in this room. I guess we have to just keep, keep looking around, try to find out what noise was, see if there's any life around still, and hopefully get out in one piece. Okay. Um, I will say, Cleric, you are not currently seeing any lights that you are, like, typically able to see through, like, walls and stuff like that, as, um, do you guys, are, are you guys checking out the rest of the offices? Yes. Uh, yeah, probably. Okay. Um, yeah, so as you guys start to go through these offices, uh, you kind of realize that they're all, there's, there's not one of them that seems out of place. Um, like... Some of them are different from others. Some have a little bit more personality to them. Some of them are pretty barren. Like, there's there's not really a lot that would tell you that there was something that happened over here. Um, and you are not sensing that there is anybody in or around these rooms, Cleric. Okay, theory. Maybe they had an assembly of some sort? And so everybody was out of the office when this all went down? Definitely. It's a big office building, though. Yeah, I feel like there'd be something. It'd at least be security. Yeah, but okay. Uh, let's try to find a gathering room, I guess. How many floors are there in this room? In this building? Um, we'll say that visible from street level, there are three floors. So there's the ground floor that you're on, the next floor, and the next floor. So there will be two more above you. Okay. Um, just a question, just hypothetically. Um, can I still see stuff when I'm going super speed? Um, that's up to you. Whether your power kind of functions like uh, Quicksilver in the X-Men, where rather than it being like him just moving super fast, it's that everything around him slows down. So he can see everything, and he's just moving at normal speed while everything else is moving in like slow motion. Uh, now I think with obviously last time I used it, I was out of breath. I felt like it'd be more like. The flash I mean, it's rub, like it's going super, still going to fast. cost you energy to do that, just because technically you are moving yeah. faster. But the way that you process it is that you see everything around you is going slower rather than it turning into like a motion blur. I'm I will use my super speed and I'm gonna just run through the halls. I'm guessing there's stairs in this building. Yes. Um I'm gonna go run up and check the floor, see if I can just sense anything. I'm not gonna go in any rooms, I'll just literally just run by, see if I can sense anything or see anything out of the ordinary and try to get back. Okay. Um are you just running through the office portion of this building? Or are you going further to the left where you saw that metal detector? Uh, let's go left. Near the metal detector. Let me just get myself ready. <laughs> okay. Um, it is a pretty large building, and you did kind of just expend yourself a little bit, so I'm going to have you yep. unleash your powers. 
Excellent. Um, What's that mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you will need to roll. Uh. Okay. Yeah, you'll roll two d six plus freak. Uh, your insecurity will not have an effect on this roll. It won't. Okay. Uh, don't split the party. <laughs> Went out the window pretty quickly. Eight. Wait. He, he yeah, can grow really fast. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so. And I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna hopefully try to get back to the groups if before anything else happens. Yeah. So you're, so. you're, you're able to do it, but again, you're, you're running pretty low on power. You might need to hit up a vending machine or something. Like your stomach's starting to growl. You're getting thirsty. You're running low on energy. Um, but you manage to make the lap around the building, and as you are going through the left-hand side, you start to notice that that side of the building is a lot different from the office side of the building. Rather than offices and standard rooms, it's laboratories and holding cells and rooms full of experiments that you don't really know how to comprehend. Uh, but in one of those rooms where you can assume there would be experiments, the glass is shattered, and whatever was inside that tube is gone. So I, I'll get back. Guys. Um, I will also <laughs> say that you were able to locate a door that looks like it would lead to a larger assembly hall. You didn't go inside, but just based yep. on the look of it, like it's a bigger door, like it's a big door and then another big door. So they're like two double sided doors next to each other. So that's pretty clear sign that that's probably to, to get large amounts of people into the space at one time. Uh, so I, I get back. I'm <laughs> near over. I'm going. I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, I think I've seen um, all the issues. There seems to be lab stuff. I see where the glass was broken. Something's escaped. What it is, I don't know. Um, and I basically point towards where where we should be going. I would think. And oh, we'll just take it a bit easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, you also do need to mark another condition. Excellent. Um, I guess I'm a, I'll be afraid because um, seeing the glass shattered and seeing that something to escape that would scare me, and also just the fact is that you know I'm being a bit hot headed well, and I'm <laughs> quite, quite yeah, exhausted. You've, you've you've kind of uh, run into a a government organization that you realize you know way less about than you ever realized. There's a lot going on here, and you probably are a little bit terrified about the implications of what all of that could mean. Um, okay. okay, are you guys going to head over to that side of the building? Shadow is. Okay, uh, what about the rest of you? Yeah, let's let's go. Let's go check out the glass. Are we doing the glass or the assembly hall? Whatever you want to do. I'm going to go with Cleric to the glass. Also, I would like to say that uh, I'm glad you understood what Warwick was saying. If he could see when he runs, I was like, is he running with his eyes closed? Yeah. <laughs> Seems like a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah, while you were running, you closed your eyes for just a little too long and ran into a wall. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but that would be hey, hilarious. It would be funny. <laughs> um, okay, so we've at least got Night Fox and Cleric going to the lab where the glass is. What about Shadow and 13? Are you guys going to go with them, or are you going to go check out the assembly hall? I'd like to check out the holding cells. Okay. Look around the area. I'll go with Shadow. Uh, I don't want to go anywhere near that glass. I've seen it. That scares me enough, so I'm good. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, okay, let's... We'll do Night Fox and Cleric first, and then we'll cut, and we'll go see what Shadow and 13 are doing. Um, so Night Fox and Cleric, you guys head over to this lab. Um, it's still pretty hard to see, but we'll say that you guys find some uh, flashlights that manage to work. Um, and as you're kind of flicking them around the lab, you spot the, the broken tube, uh, which seems to be, it's, it's human sized, um, so it could have fit a person inside of it there is kind of like a, a gelatinous water like a, a gelatinous liquidy 
uh, substance on the floor that the glass is shattered into. Um, and you can see some monstrous footprints that start leading towards the door and then out. And then they kind of disappear as the the, the substance kind of came off of their feet. Well, That's this gross. is a good. Oh, boy. Is this what's causing the issues, or do you think this is just secondary? Mm, it's probably secondary because, I mean, the dome thing happened first, and then we got here, and then we heard the crash, so... Is this second or third? Depending if really all the lights being out is really bad. Good point. This just seems like something's escaped. Shoot. I don't know if we should do this first or go back to the, trying to solve the dome. Um, well... I don't, I don't know. I don't really want something just, you know, like... I don't want it getting outside into the populace, but I don't also want it in here with us either. Yeah, I mean, we don't even know how to solve the dome, so I feel like we should try to fix this because it's closer and potentially easier. I was gonna say, I will say, Cleric, you do remember that thirteen kind of mentioned that they think that the dome is secondary to whatever is going on in Aegis. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I think we should try to solve this. This seems potentially solvable, while the dome and the building not so much. Okay. Um. So it it broke this glass. Um. Just I'm just trying to think a, a little bit ahead. If we stop this thing, whatever it is, um, what are we gonna do with it? Uh, there were holding cells. Thirteen said, "Maybe we can see if there's one open, or maybe when they come back from their thing, they'll find one open, and we can toss it in there." Mm, okay. I mean that works. Or I don't suppose you have any like snacks on you that we can lead it this way. I'm trying to think of what I would have in my first aid kit. <laughs> I kind of think I'd have an orange on me, but I would have handed it to Thirteen already if I did. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think your your snack pack might be a little bit exhausted. Um, you guys have seen uh, that there are vending machines back by the office area. Uh, they are not functioning, but they would still have snacks inside of them if you wanted to try to break some out. Um... Yeah, let's uh let's let's break some snacks out. Okay. Oh goody, we get to add breaking to our breaking and entering. Uh, no, no, <laughs> it's it's we're liberating the snacks from their confinement. Yeah. That's, that's a fun way of putting it. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. it. Um Okay. I'll keep watch while you liberate then. Okay, I uh, uh, I find like a chair and just break it. Okay. Um. Sure. Uh, because that's not really unleashing your powers because you're not using nope. your powers to do this. Uh, yeah, you you go over. We just see. <laughs> We see Night Fox kind of maybe like checking out the different chairs. Like I mean, like a, a swivelly business chair probably isn't going to be good to the, good for this. They're a little bit not great, uh, but there are some more like solid metal chairs in the uh, in the entryway in the foyer where people would probably be waiting if they were trying to meet up with like an agent or something like that. Uh, and you pick one of those up. It's hefty, and you just slam it into the vending machine, it shatters, and a bunch of chips and cookies and candy all come spilling out. Perfect. Now let's go find us a monster. Okay. All right, so how do you guys plan on finding this monster? The footprints Probably only go so far before they stop. Uh, can I see any life force? No. Yeah, that would be too easy. Um, uh, 
I guess just go in the direction of the footprints. What's is there just like down a hallway? Are there doors to the sides? Do we see any destruction? Um, so you don't really see any sort of destruction and the like aside from the tube being broken, you don't really see anything else that's like uh that's been destroyed. So it doesn't seem like this thing was like super pissed off or anything. Like there's no scratches on the walls, there's nothing like no dents, no nothing. Um the doors seem untouched and uh the footprints head farther down along the line of laboratories and such rather than going back towards like the front door. Um if you would like, you could assess the situation to try to figure out the best way to deal with this. Okay, I guess I'll do an assess, and that's plus superior. Yep. Which is not my good stat. <laughs> uh, I got an eight total. Okay, so you can ask one question from the assess the situation. What here can I use to blank? What here is the biggest threat? What here is in the greatest danger? Who here is most vulnerable to me? Or how could we best end this quickly? I'm gonna go, how could we best end this quickly? Okay. Um, so you guys head back to the lab, and as you're kind of maybe taking a minute to look around a little bit more, you find a file. Uh, it was kind of haphazardly like tucked underneath a laptop, and you pull it out, you flip it open, um, and you actually kind of kept a glimpse of what this creature might look like. It's um, it's it's humanoid, but it's got like its facial features are disturbed. Uh, it's got scales coming up along its neck. Um, its nose has been disappearing its brows are far more pronounced um and you get the sense that this creature has been gradually losing well no it hasn't been losing its sense of humanity but it's um it's been treated as less than human as this uh progression has started um so you know that it's intelligent so it's not going to be going on some sort of rampage. And as you follow the footsteps out into the hallway, you realize that there is actually another exit out of the building in that direction. And it does look like there was a little bit of slime on the door handle, and it kind of just got up and left. So the best way that you can end this quickly... It's going to be difficult to track it after it's left the building. Your best course of action is probably going to be to leave it alone and deal with it later. Okay, I guess I'll relay that to Nightfall. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you guys were kind of doing the, the investigation together, so you kind of both wind up being like, okay, well, we can go after it, but then we leave Shadow and 13 here, and, you know, with everything going on at Aegis, maybe this doesn't quite take priority when it doesn't seem like this thing is hell-bent on destroying the city. And it seems to have broken out after Aegis has gone dark and the dome incident. So at this point, I think we should go try to meet up with 13 and Shadow and see what they're up to. Okay, yeah. Sounds good to me. All right, so 13 and Shadow, you guys have headed towards the holding cells. Is there something in particular that you're looking for, or are you just trying to get a look around? I'm just trying to just get sort of bearings on what's going on, basically, and sort of keeping an eye on whatever escaped that glass, just sort of just making sure <laughs> it doesn't creep up on us. All right. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, what about you, Shadow? Uh, I kind of want to see if there's like any uh any things being held in these holding cells that you know could be fun to walk while being on the other side, being like, "Haha, you're you're over there. I'm over here." Um, so these holding cells are solid doors, so you can't see through them. Um, they are marked 
with names, but most of them don't really mean anything to you. There's like a couple that you're like, oh, that's that villain that got caught last week. Um, but these doors are actually locked, not electronically, but with like mechanical locks. Um, you can unlock some of them from the outside, but you don't have the proper keys to get into them. However, you do have teleportation abilities, if you would like to try to break into any particular cell. Yeah. I'd like hey, Shadow, why don't you maybe like try to teleport in? Yeah. I'll, I'll pick a random cell and just be like, I'm going to pop in here for a second. Okay. I'm, I'm going to start. I'm going to be, I'm going to be here. Any issues? Um shout <laughs> <laughs> all right um okay we'll say that you stop outside of the cell and the name on the outside is uh say electric doom is the name that is etched on the plaque outside um, and I'm going to need an Unleash Your Powers, since you have not seen the inside of this cell, you don't know exactly where it is, and you are kind of taking a leap of faith trying to get in there. So, I rolled 11, and that's plus 1, so that would be 12. Perfect. Nice. Yeah, you... Good work. Like, as, as, as awkward as this can be, you have kind of done this before, and it's just you this time, so you're back in your mojo, you have no problems uh, getting in there. Um, you get inside, it is dark, but you guys have flashlights, so you kind of shine the flashlight around, and it's, it's not a super large cell, um, but there is, like, there's a chair and a table, chair and tables up against a wall that is one-way glass um and then tucked in the corner is a bed and then there's like another corner that has a toilet and a sink um and curled up in the bed under some blankets is presumably whoever is being held in here this uh this electric doom shadow are you all good shadow. shadow cannot hear you from inside the cell so I walk up to Shut up! <laughs> I walk up to the the figure, the person, the presumably person thing electric doom that's supposed to be holding here and I poke their face. Uh nothing happens. I poke doom. <laughs> Um, the, we'll say that the blanket gets disturbed enough, you can see that they have a power inhibitor collar on, so they are unable to use their abilities. Um, however, it doesn't seem to be on, but they do not react to you poking them. So the fact that it's not on, it's like, probably shouldn't wake them up, but also kind of want to wake them up that is up to and, you shadow and like i the mean shadow do. <laughs> i was angry before and i guess i can still be kind of angry the fact that this person isn't waking up when i want them to wake up it's gonna um, like yeah if you want to clear the angry condition you could hurt them yes okay so what does like, that look like? I take my foot and I just kick their face. Okay. Yeah, you like, hey. you <laughs> lift Did I get to do this before? <laughs> <laughs> um as you kick them, there's something kind of weird. It's like it's like you're kicking a, a solid wall. They don't move, they don't react. Uh, like, even as, like, your foot presses into their face, like, their skin doesn't press down. It's just, like, solid. Uh, but I will say that that is enough to clear your angry condition since you did have the intent to cause them harm. Uh, but they do not wake up, they do not move. 
pull up. I think they're dead. Maybe. I don't know. So I'm gonna attempt to teleport back out. Yeah, I'll say that you'll be fine to just teleport back out, back out without using, without unleashing your powers. So... Oh, Shadow, you okay? Shadow, I, I was calling you. I I didn't know where you went. I yeah, before Shadow you. pops out, we get we cut to a a long panel of of thirteen just yelling Shadow. <laughs> And oh, as no. as Shadow pops out, it finishes off with the oh oh you're back. <laughs> <laughs> how so how are Shadow. you? <laughs> so Shadow just deadpan stares at thirteen. It's like, well, there's a dead body in there. Other than that, it's oh normal self. Oh, that's normal. I mean, the body didn't move when I kicked it, so you, uh, that doesn't seem normal. Didn't seem there's like... There's more not normal, but that's fine. Um, yeah. Was there anything on the body? Did you... What's the name on the door? Electric Doom. Do we know? Yeah. Who, would I know who that is? Um... Uh, yeah. Uh, you know that Electric Doom is uh, obviously an electric-powered uh, supervillain. Uh, yep. They were most famously caught about a month ago um, when they attempted to basically fry Halcyon's uh, electricity grid in order to gain a substantial amount of wealth. They were caught and brought back to Aegis. Oh, remember reading about Electric Doom? Oh, no, they're dead. Oh. Hmm. I mean, they had one of these collar things on them that I think that the heroes use to, like, make it so that they can't use their powers. But um, it didn't seem like it was on. Shadow, I'll say and that I your dad them. made those collars. Your your the the primary thing that your father's company sells is actually those collars because they are bought so prominently by Aegis. Do you do you have to, did you bring the collar with you, Shadow? No, but I know the model. You know the model. Okay. Yeah. Cause... Did 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 your dad make these? Yep. Okay, yep. that's fine. Um, I feel like mentioning on the colors would sort of start stirring some stuff in my head. That relates to my future or my my present. Um, and I don't know. Obviously, you can sort of do what you want with this stuff, but I feel like the speaking of the colors and the stopping of powers would stir some stuff something in me yeah so we'll say that you get a a it's it's a it's fuzzy but it's a memory um and you remember the weight of that collar you have worn one of those in the past and you are also aware that something that there were a lot of people that didn't like these collars and they were potentially part of the reason that the world became as it was, as people rebelled against them and used their powers to basically destroy the world. I like would take a step back a little bit, just sort of just try just to gather and just this is a bad place. I can't quite put my put, put my finger on it, but just those collars, they're not good things. No one should be restricted of who they should be. That comment. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that comment of no one should be restricted of who they should be hits there on me. She just nods. Or shadow. Just nods. Just like quiet. Yeah. I think like like a silent sort of a, a, a silent agreement. Yeah, you guys yeah. kind of have a, a mutual stand understanding here. Um, if you want, uh, since I believe both of you still have condition or no, uh, thirteen, you have a conditions. Um, Salem, if you want.
want to take a moment to comfort or support 13, that could help clear that condition. Um, if you would like to take that moment, since you guys are having a bit of a bonding experience here. Sure. Okay. Uh, so Good. roll plus mundane. What's mundane? This character development, I love it. <laughs> it's the best part of this game. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, I, I give inspiration. <laughs> so. Oh. I rolled a four plus mundane, which is five. Okay, so that is not a hit. Um, we'll say that narratively, you guys do share this moment of like. Yeah, no, we're on we're in agreement here that this is not okay, this isn't right, but there's not really there's not really comfort to be taken from that. It's just it's kind of sad cuz while you guys might recognize it, others will not and 13 you are all too aware of that. Um so that it doesn't really help you feel any better. But it's uh it's still a moment between the two of you, and especially thirteen for you, that's uh, <laughs> that's a good sign from Shadow, since you believe that they have the potential to go down the wrong path, or maybe it's ominous, because you know that powers were used to to destroy the world, yeah. and if Shadow is vehemently against these collars, that's not necessarily a good sign. Yeah, I feel like there'd be a lot of um, just fear. I think just thinking of the colors and obviously seeing shadow and obviously thinking of their father and stuff and just it it'd definitely be a moment but it'd just be it'd be yeah it'd there's be, yeah. i'd say there's probably a lot of conflicting <laughs> emotions going on right there because yeah. on the one hand you agree these colors are bad on the other hand you know what happened after these colors came about and became more popular so it's kind of a double-edged sword in in that regard um, all right. Is there anything else you two want to do with these holding cells? Or are we ready to reunite the group? Um, I want to get as far away from these cells as possible. Um, so I'm happy to go back to the group. All right. Are you going to go I'll with follow? Them? Okay. Um, yeah. So 13 and shadow, you guys start heading out of the holding cell area. Um, towards the end of it, you guys are in the night box and cleric. All four of you are reunited again. Um, and now what would you guys like to do from there? Wasn't there a door that we couldn't get in to? Um, is that a door I can kick? Yet? There's, <laughs> no, there's... Um, you guys haven't gone into the assembly hall yet, if you would like to check that out. Um, Cleric, I will say, as you guys get closer to the assembly hall, you start to see life force. Guys, I think I think there's people here. I think they're ahead. We should... Let's go. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. Okay. Are all four of you yeah. going to gonna go in? Uh, I'm yep. going to slow down a bit. Okay, so Night Fox is going to hang back a little. Uh, but still heading in the direction of the assembly hall, yes? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I sort of look over and sort of, I'm aware of Night Fox slowing down, but I sort of just sort of just let them be, just feel like they've got something they want to do, so. Okay. I'm just so happy to see Life Force. I'm like running fast as I can. <laughs> okay, all right, so we'll say that Claire Shadow gets there first. wants to kick the door down. Um, all right, so we'll say that Cleric gets to one door and Shadow gets to the other. Cleric just opens the doors, but Shadow's kind of taking a little bit longer so that so that they can kick it down. Cleric, as you open that door, um, you do indeed see people, and they are all sitting in kind of assembly hall chairs, except for a few. There are a few people that are, like, standing, and they've got, like, a grips on the chairs you see one person with their finger to their communicator you recognize agent ida none of them seem to be moving you can still see their life force but they're not they're frozen almost are we all in except for, where, where's um where's shadow uh shadow, shadow like as cleric okay so we'll say as Cleric uh, goes in, there's probably a moment of like, oh my god, what is happening here? Shadow busts in yep. the door shortly after. Um, <laughs> 13 and Night Fox, it's up to you if you oh, guys are also going in the room. 
Uh, I I would follow um, like Fox and Cleric. Like I'm aware. Uh, sorry, I follow uh, Shadow and Cleric. I'm aware Night Fox laid down, but I I do go in. Okay. What about you, Night Fox? Are you still hanging back, or are you do you, are you are you close enough that you would see through the doors what is going on in there? Well, yeah, I'm gonna see through them after somebody kicks them open. Okay. <laughs> kind of hard to miss. Yeah. So you guys, all of you. Uh, we we have cleric opening the door, and then we have the big page of this auditorium esque room with just stock still, eerily frozen figures. Like some people are frozen in positions that you shouldn't be able to be frozen in, but they are perfectly still. Like it's not like they're holding it; they're just stuck right there. Um, and then we'll cut to cleric, who is. Probably like it probably takes a second for you guys to realize that they're not moving, but once it starts to hit, it's kind of ominous and maybe a little bit terrifying. Guys, doesn't seem right. What, what what is this? They can they're not moving. They're there, but they're like frozen. And they're definitely there. I can see their life force. So this is this like a a time. Time has stopped? Right, no, Do you have a watch on? Do I have a watch? <laughs> You're a time traveler. I would expect you to have a watch on. I'm I mean, not the most fair. prepared. <laughs> I mean... Uh, we'll say that there's a clock in the, in the auditorium. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's, it's not ticking. Time has stopped. How has time stopped? What is going on? <gasps> Do I have super what speed? It's amazing. <laughs> yes, it's 13. Nightbox begins to ponder their newfound abilities. Sh Shadow, are you looking at are you, are you saying that directly at me? Yes. I'm like, I, I, I don't know what I've done. I, I, I don't think I've done anything. I don't think this is me. All I know is this is not a place that is good and this isn't good the time on the clock what time is it like uh was it right when the we saw the dome form is it before um so it would have happened shortly after the dome uh basically as soon as ida's communication cut off from you is when it happened all right, 13 couldn't have done this. He was still with us, and we weren't here. It's separate. Um, yeah. <laughs> Cleric, I'll say that you look down for a second, kind of like as you're examining this room, and you see that there are a couple of other life forces beneath you, and then they move away and they start to fade. So there are some moving ones, but they are not on this floor. People! There are people. There, uh, moving people. The uh, down below us, uh, underground. There's people that are moving, like us. Uh, I'm gonna narrow my eyes here? at uh, clerics and be like, um, "We're on the bottom floor. What are you talking about?" There's, there's got to be more floors. I see light below us. What were these people here, though? Aren't we? Should we do something or? Can we try to go to the people that's moving? Should we assess the situation? Sure. Yeah, if you would like to, go ahead and roll uh, plus superior. I don't know if I want to chance this, but all right. I mean, it's not going to hurt you if you miss. You just won't get to ask any questions. No more questions. I got a three. <laughs> all right. Yeah, Claire, you have no idea. Um, if anybody else would like to try, I will allow that if somebody else wants to assess it. I'm too in shock, it seems. Yeah, you're... <laughs> this is really weird for you, Claire, because you know that they're alive, but they are frozen, which is strange. Um, I'll, 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 I can assess it. Okay. Five. Ooh. Yeah, that yeah. won't cut it. I will say you guys do have what is called team, which will basically give you well, it's still not gonna be enough in this case. 
But if you had gotten up to a six, um, there is a team. So if somebody wanted to assist you, you could get a plus one on a roll. Uh, but a five, turning it into a six isn't going to save you on that one. Um, so you also are That's not fair. really able to determine. And like it's it's more that you guys just aren't able to determine what takes priority here. You don't know if you should be going and checking out the people that you saw that were moving or if you should be staying behind and helping these people or if you should be getting the hell out of here like you're just really not sure i quite like to get out of here personally but i feel like we need to sort this out i'd like to attempt to just teleport down but i don't think that would end well no you absolutely can uh roll plus freak to unleash your powers okay. are you going alone or are you taking anyone with you no, I'm going alone. Okay. I, as as Shadow does this, I take their hand and go, you're not going alone. I don't know if that's going to affect anything, but... No. So I got a 10. Okay. Uh, yeah, despite uh, 13 kind of abruptly grabbing on and going with you, you are able to successfully uh, unleash your powers. You teleport to the floor below. Um... The you don't see anyone down there. Um, you are in a room. It's a big. It's a. It's a pretty good sized room. It's it's more of a lab esque room, but rather than being like organic experimentation, it's a lot more of like mechanical parts. Uh, so there's uh, gadgets and like cogs and tools and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then you turn around, and pressed to the wall behind you is a, it's like a giant machine. It's taller than both of you by a good couple of feet. Uh, it's bronze and metallic, very shiny, obviously new. And there's a clock placed right in the center of it. And then underneath that is kind of like a keypad. Uh, it's not a full keyboard, um, but it's more like a numpad. And the clock face is currently frozen. Um, and I will say there's also like a computer kind of off to the side of it that uh, you see seems to... You can't really make out exactly what it is, but it's kind of like a... a almost like a sonar screen that you would see on a submarine. And you can see that there's like a little bubble centralized on it. Um, and it's not like emitting any like pings or anything. There's just that circle, uh, and it it looks like you could maybe drag it and pull it out or push it in or, or whatever else. Dedicated? I swear to God. <laughs> but that's what you see when you teleport. Down. Was that a scare loop? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I should have turned those off, but it's fine. Uh, so what would you two like to do? Um, I will just apologize to Shadow. So I'm, I'm sorry to be abrupt part of that, but I don't want you going by yourself anyway. Just, we need to just try to stay together. Yeah, we technically left the two up there, but you know. don't. <laughs> um, what is this machine? <laughs> do I recognize it? So, Shadow... Uh... <laughs> 13, Shadow, you have a vague recollection of something that looks similar to this machine. In your time, it is far more refined, but your family is pretty heavily involved with time travel. So this, uh, this machine is not entirely unfamiliar to you, but it is a very, very, very old model. And it has been repurposed for something other than just time travel. I feel like I recognize this, but this is, this isn't right. This feels just, it feels off. I can't quite put my finger on it. Um, but just, I feel like this is connected in some way, but this, it doesn't seem right. There's bad energy coming from this. Does Shadow know? <laughs> <laughs> so... I'd be slightly upset that he just randomly grabbed me and decided to come along, so I'd let 
whip my hand away from him as we come to the bottom. Just like, don't ever do that again. And then I'd attempt to look around the gadgets, see if, since the collar was something that my father made, see if any of the gadgets are things that I may know of. Um, no, you actually don't really recognize any of this. It doesn't seem like it's being utilized as, like, a weapon, at least not in the sense that you're used to, um, and it doesn't really have any of the telltale signs of your father's company within it. Do you recognize this at all? Do you know what this is? Nope. None of this looks familiar. However, I do want to see if there's a puzzle with the clock and the number pad. Okay. Uh, do you just want to go over and start messing with it, or how are you gonna? How is Shadow gonna approach that? So, based on what the time shows on the frozen clock, I'll input the number that's there, like in uh, military time so it'd be within the 24 hour clock okay so you head over to the time machine and you punch in the numbers and as soon as you do that all four of you experience this blinding flash of light and then you wind up back where you first started heading to school walking down the street as the dome appears and seals itself around the city. Uh, Cleric, this time you do not receive, actually all of you, you do not receive a call from Aegis. Um, however, your communicators are working again and there is suddenly an onslaught of things that have started happening around the city. So. Do we know that we've just basically gone back yes, in time? Yes, you... Yes, because the dome appears, so you get the sense that this is a repeat of what happened yesterday. More or less, because there are now a couple of differences, as you can tell from your communicators, you are not receiving any communication from Aegis this time around. Um, and also, Cleric, you notice that your teammates' life forces are not quite as bright as they were when you started. They're not gone, and they're not significantly depleted, but there's just enough to be noticeable sheared off. Um, so, as your guys communicate... Like they've used... No, they, they don't use life force. Oh, shoot. Yeah, so it's like it's just kind of being weirdly almost sapped away uh, with that restart. So... As your guys' communicators start to blow up, you're kind of able to pick out that there are a couple of different things happening throughout the city. So first and foremost, you kind of pick up on like a hand or like a police radio that's coming through that there is a bank being robbed. Uh, you get another communication that says that the lighthouse on the wharf is not currently manned because it was like daytime. Um, so there is no lighthouse to guide the boats in, and there is a ship getting frighteningly close to the edge of the city on the wharf side. Um, however, as you kind of look out towards that bay area, you are able to see that there are people that are getting lights out and are starting to try to guide that ship. Um, there is a bomb threat in the local hospital. Uh, Cleric will say that that is where your dad was and where your sanctuary is, or at least where your sanctuary is close to. Um... Then you get a report that there is a monster that is wandering downtown and causing trouble there. Um, and then the last thing, as all of these horrible reports are coming in, which it's not totally unusual, unusual for Halcyon City, uh, but a final, there's like a pop in your communicators and they go quiet for a second. And then a voice comes over and it's masked. Uh, so you can't really determine if it's somebody that you would know or not, but they come over and they demand that any and all, uh, 
inventions created by Alpha Industries be destroyed, or else everybody will be trapped in this dome forever. So, what would you guys like to do? I'd like to blame 13. <laughs> this, I did, I, I don't think this was me. I'm not 100% sure, but we are back where we were. I think we're back where we were. Just earlier today, not overall. Time is weird. <laughs> it's even weirder when you don't wear a watch. Loop. Point taken. <laughs> time loop. So Shadow knows what Alpha Industries is. Yep. So of course, she keeps quiet about that because she doesn't necessarily want to tell her teammates about that. But, but she... I, I think that it would be common knowledge. I don't think that it's something that you'd really be able to hide. At least, at very least, I would say that 13 would know what Alpha Industries is. Um, whether Cleric and Nightbox do is maybe a little bit more iffy, but it's it's still a prolific company, and with Aegis using them, uh, especially the Callers, uh, it's it's not like they're unheard of. But she steps, she sort of takes a step back from the group, just like, yeah, they. They want her family's company gadgets to be destroyed. That's, that's, that's something. Yep. So wait, so wait, who wants them destroyed? Uh, you don't know who exactly it is, but they, it's... Does she know? Nope. Okay. Nope, none of you have any idea. So, you guys have several different options that you could potentially choose from. <laughs> what would you like to do? The ultimate thing, choice. <laughs> okay, so everybody outside of the Aegis building can move and is moving through time. Yes. Um, I will say that you notice that everybody's life force has dimmed just that little bit. I don't know what to do with this information. <laughs> so I, I'm a bit confused. We're back where we started at the beginning. Is it the same day? Yep. Okay. So Night Fox has a headache. <laughs> Timey wimey bullshit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't eat those snacks, or did I eat those snacks? Now I'm confused. Ah, uh, the eternal paradoxes. I think we're all confused because somehow we got back here. Um, Shadow, was anyone doing anything before we back to where we are now? Was anyone touching anything? Did anyone move anything? I pressed buttons. <laughs> you, you, you pressed buttons? Oh. What buttons? On what? There was a like a uh, machine thing. You pressed the button. Oh no! Shiny had a clock, had a number pad. Just okay. Hold on. Put in the time. What did y'all find? <laughs> okay, I think I think I know what this machine was. Um, it's very different to what I understand it to be. Um. What do I know of it, Tough? <laughs> what would I think it is? Uh, you know that it is some sort of time machine. It has been yeah. altered from the purpose of just traveling through time. Because normally time machines, it's go forward or go backwards. But this one f can also apparently freeze. Which is so, unusual. Yeah, so, so this is like a very sort of very sort of primitive version of what I, I can, can use to go or have used to go back in time. Yep. Um, I didn't recognize it at the time. 
um, and it looks like it's been modified in a different way that I'm I can't even understand. But it seems like when Shadow pressed it, we're back to where we are. Okay. But things are also different to where we were when we were last here. <laughs> is, is it different because we went back in time then? Based on your experience with time travel, if like you go back a couple of minutes, are things always different? They shouldn't be, but I, I, the memories and the things I can think. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm hearing tough to know. <laughs> it's so different. There's no music. I know. Um, I can't trust what I believe to be true or not. Uh, things are still quite fuzzy. Um, I'm not used to doing time travel. I don't think this is right. It doesn't. None of this feels right. And also, that dome doesn't. Obviously, it's telling me it's not right. Can we do a group assess the situation to try to figure out where we should go? Um, it would still be individual, but you can relay to the group what you believe is the best course of action. And then try to convince them from there. Um, everyone is welcome to make assess this assess the situation rules, but asking the same question is going to get the same answer. Okay, I'd like to do an assess the situation. Okay, roll plus superior. I got a three. Nope. Someone rather than me or cleric roll. <laughs> I, I would like to roll, roll for the first damn. time ever. All right, go night fox. Go night you, you fox. Got you got this. Uh yep. That's uh, I'm just gonna skip my turn. <laughs> what like what did you roll? Assess the situation. Well, what I did you it. roll night mm -hmm. fox? Oh, okay, yeah. All right, shadow, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Superior is two. So I got ten. Perfect. You can ask uh, two questions. What here can I use to blink? What here is the biggest threat? What here is in the greatest danger? Who here is the most vulnerable to me? How could we best end this quickly? Uh, questions. Uh... I will say biggest threat would probably give you the best idea on where to go first, um, as would greatest danger. Okay, I'll ask what's the biggest threat. Okay. Um, so kind of taking in your knowledge of what's happening, obviously the the potential of the dome being stuck forever is a very very big threat uh however you have no idea how to handle that right now um with where you are currently i would say that your primary concern would probably be to stop the bomb in the hospital or to stop the bank robbery all right do i ask another question yes you have one more question you can ask or you can hold that question and ask it later. What is the greatest danger? What is in the greatest danger? Yeah. Um... I mean, currently the city as a whole is not in a great place. Um, thing that you would probably deem as the most immediate threat would be somebody setting off a bomb in a building full of sick people. Uh, so those people would be what you would consider to be most in danger. Alright. I think we should head over to the hospital. Because the bomb... Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I think that's probably the most pressing thing at the moment because that could potentially go off at any point. And then we can try to sort of assess what else is going on. Sounds good to me. Let's get out over there. So I'd like to attempt to teleport Night Fox and Cleric over there. 
Okay. 13 can just run. <laughs> that is gonna be an unleash your powers from both of you, so we'll plus three. That's fine. Is that because that is that because I um took a trip without asking? Shall yes. <laughs> so I sheepishly get my gla- my sunglasses on. <laughs> I got ten. My rolling okay. as well, was it? Yes. Uh, with a 10 Good. shadow, you have no problems. You guys all teleport to the hospital. We'll say that you, because the sanctuary is nearby, you uh, teleport there. It's a familiar place, so not too difficult. Uh, the only thing that would have been hard is teleporting multiple people, but you're getting better with that. So, yay, progress. Uh, uh, is it Adam really Freak? Cool. Yes. Uh, nine. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, you're, you make it, um, we'll say that it takes you a while to get there, because you're trying to conserve your energy, because you've kind of realized that just bolting it is wearing you out pretty fast, so it takes you a while to get there, but you make it, and this time you're not as hunched over gasping for breath trying to, to, to wait up, but, uh, yeah, everybody's waiting. Uh, for a couple of minutes before 13 manages to show up. I'm back. Hey guys, sorry about that. I just took a, <laughs> more of a leisurely stroll. <laughs> um, Alright, so you guys arrive at the hospital and we'll get kind of like a big panel screen of, of the hospital itself. Um, and there are flashing lights going on outside. There's car, cars already pulled up. Aegis is... Or actually, no, Aegis isn't there. Uh, other government agency. Like, FBI is their SWAT team. Um, going in because this is a pretty serious threat if somebody actually has a bomb. Um, they've got a barricade set up outside the front doors and around the back doors. Um, so how would you guys like to go about doing this? We should go try to talk to somebody in charge. I agree, yep. Okay. Find somebody in charge and ask them questions. All right. Um, who's going to be the go- one going to... Are you all just going to try to talk to him at the same time, or who's kind of like your your designated spokesperson? I think we should all talk at exactly the same time, and uh, that will definitely <laughs> intimidate them to give us the answer correctly. And if we shout over each other as well, that will help. Yes. Obviously. Yep. yep. Yeah. Me and words um, do not seem to be going well today, so I'm not going to vote myself. Okay. And we all know that 13 is great with words. I vote 13. <laughs> That's their Hey, 13, power. you're last, so you go talk to the commissioner. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I sheepishly, uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so you, uh, I mean, you guys are, are in your suits. We'll say that all four of you go, but 13 is the one that winds up going up to go actually talk to them. Um, and they see you guys in your suits, and the you, you you managed to pick out like the chief of police, um, and he he looks at you guys and he's like, "There you are! Like, God, we've been trying to get somebody over here for ages. Where the, I thought the ages would be sending somebody out. What what took you guys so long? Wait, you're you're teenagers. What are you doing here? Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, what's what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> um well I there's a bomb threat in the hospital. Somebody's threatening to, to blow up on, on the eighth floor. Do we know who it is? We haven't been able to identify the suspect yet. Okay, and is anyone inside? Like civilians? Uh yeah, it's a hospital. What? <laughs> he is looking less and less impressed the more that you talk to him. What do you mean me popping my chest out isn't isn't helping? Yeah, he kind of he reaches out and he pokes your chest to like push it back down. He's like, "Okay, buddy, let, let's let's put aside the bravado for a second here." Have there been any demands? Uh, they have demanded uh a couple billion. Um. And also guarantee that they will be able to leave the city, which is sort of difficult to promise when there's a giant dome locking us in. You don't know anything about the dome, do you? Just by chance. Buddy, I just work here. This isn't... This this, this stuff happens all the time. Honestly, a bomb threat is, is almost exciting at this point. 
I turn around and go, like, right, guys, uh, we need we need to get this sorted out as soon as they're on the eighth floor, haven't identified who it is. Civilians haven't been evacuated yet. Um, they've got demands, they want two million uh, and also a safe passage out of the city, which don't think is going to happen. But <laughs> so what's our um, plan, guys? If you wanted as well, you could also attempt to pierce his mask to ask a couple of other questions. Uh, that maybe he wouldn't tell you upright, or you can just go with the information that he's given you. Oh, that's what pierced the mask. Oh, okay. Yeah. I would like to pierce the mask because he poked my friend. Okay. Go for it, Shadow. Uh, roll plus mundane. God, yeah, like, you're like, I'm still pissed off with you, but you don't poke. poke yeah, nobody friends. pokes my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Only I get to taunt the oh. asshole on my team. <laughs> So, I rolled a 12, and plus 1 is 13. Yeah, nope, Damn. you uh, you get to ask three questions. So there's, what are you really planning? What do you want me to do? What do you intend to do? How could I get your character to blank? And how could I gain influence over you? The last one, not necessarily super applicable here, but something along the lines of those questions. So, like to ask, what do they intend to do about the situation? Um, if you guys are unsuccessful, then they are probably considering brute force, which could potentially put everybody in the hospital in danger, but they're running out of options because they don't really have the means to give this guy what he wants. What are you looking for us to do? Uh, he wants you to go in and de-escalate the situation or manage to disable the bomb without causing civilian harm. And what are you planning? Like, really planning? Um, like you said, he's... Every, every day in Halcyon City is, has its own unique challenges, uh, and he is kind of getting sick of it. So, honestly, if this goes bad, he's ready to leave. And if it goes well, then, well, it's just another day in the city. Alright, so I go back to the team and relay the information so guys if uh if we fail they're they're going to endanger a whole lot of people's lives and i ain't gonna have that i will say too that if this does fail and you guys go in there then he's probably going to blame it on you cool 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 cool, cool. um how tall is the hospital uh we'll say it's like 10 stories and okay. he did tell you that the bomber is located on the 8th. So it sounds like if we could teleport to the roof, that'd be the quickest way to get to it. Um, could, can I talk to the chief? Yeah. Um, hello there, chiefy, chieftain. I don't know your name. And you're not wearing an, a name tag. So, it's enough. That's actually their name. <laughs> yeah, it's my name is Chiefy Cheeperton. <laughs> How did you not know? Uh, no, his. Uh, it's uh, Chief Anderson. Sure, it is. Um, so, can you talk to the suspect? Uh, yeah, they've been calling us, making demands. Okay, I want you to tell them that you're working on getting them out of the city by trying to get some glass cutters to cut open the dome. So that's going to take some time. Okay. So that should buy us enough time to help you guys. Sure. I'll be sure to give him a call. And he he does reach back and take out his, like whatever phone they've been using to keep in contact with this guy, and he'll He'll kind of look at you and be like, this is stupid, and then 
take the phone up to his ear and, and be like, don't worry, we're getting glass cutters, we're gonna get you out of here, everything's fine, like, we're listening to your demands, we're getting the money and everything, just give us a little longer, yada yada yada, uh, so that I'll buy you a little bit of time. Good. Um... All right, so, yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, Mr. Anderson. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm clearly sure that because you, you do your job quite well, you probably um, have talked to the uh, chief of medicine to know how many uh, unac- unevacuated personnel and patients are on that floor. Correct? Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, he'll relay that um, they were able to get some of the lower floors evacuated, but about the 8th through the 10th floor uh, are kind of stuck. Uh, they don't really dare to try to get out. Um, okay. So there's there's a good chunk of people in there. So... Um... While you guys keep him occupied, instead of us confronting him immediately, because right now you think that's probably a bad idea with, with my what my my um teammates have talked to you about. How about we go to the roof and we use um some of our powers to move the patients that you guys couldn't move to other hospitals in the area. Is that okay? Sure, I'll even call some of them up and see if we can get some life flight hospitals over, or life flight helicopters over here. Yeah, that uh, would be good. Just uh, don't don't set this guy off. I don't. I'd hate to have to be the person cleaning up this mess. Well, that's why they have janitors, and then I walk away. He's just like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> cool and he'll go back to meandering um so you guys know roughly how many people are in there uh you know which floor the bomb thread is located on uh how would you like to go about doing this i think the quickest way would for me would be for me to teleport everybody up to the roof as much as i'd like to leave 13 down here to have him run up watch the wall. Him, himself. Yeah, watch him struggle to run up the wall. Uh, I'll just teleport everybody up. All right, unleash your powers. Thank you, Shadow. So that'll be a nine. Okay, so you are successful in teleporting everybody. However, you don't make it to the roof. Instead, you find yourself on one of the Floors. So you kind of misgaged how far you needed to go. Um, so rather than being on the rooftop like you guys wanted, uh, we'll say that you guys are able to figure out that you're on the ninth floor. Still not bad. And I oh, also need nice uh, Shadow to mark a condition. So I think I'll mark insecurity. Yeah, insecure. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, you were like, she could do it. Yeah, you were finally getting a hold of your powers, and you were like, okay, yeah, I got this. And then you kind of messed it up again. So yeah, maybe maybe a little bit insecure in your powers. Um, okay. So how would you guys like to proceed from here? Um, Claire, can you can can you sense like different life energy from? The enemies, or are they all interchangeable? Uh, pretty much interchangeable. I mean, I could probably tell who has a lot of energy versus the thick people with a lot less. Um, so I guess, can I see below me? Um, yeah, you get like a faint sense of what's down there, but there are also medical personnel in the building yeah, it, so it's it, kind it, of still hard to distinguish like you definitely see that there are people with very little there's people that are like 
kind of doing okay. They still got a little bit of time left. Uh, some peoples are actually getting brighter as they're being helped. Um, but it, it's not like you're able to pinpoint like, oh yeah, that's that's our guy with the bomb. That That's the one. Well, do I see anybody with a decent amount of life force that's either alone or like pacing? Um, no, you're not able to make out that much. Okay. If you wanted to unleash your powers and try to read it, then I would allow it. But as a as a passive ability, you're not able to pick up on that. Um, I don't think I'm going to right now. Okay. Okay. Um, so, Cleric, are you able to tell which, um, using your, your ability to see their life forces on this floor, are you able to see which patients would be, we'd be able to move? I feel like I can do that. We'd probably want to move the most vulnerable out of the way. Well, we can't move anyone that needs their life support. Okay, good point. I guess we're not taking the beds with us. Uh, yeah, I should be able to tell who is okay after their beds that we can take up to the roof. Okay. Is there medical pe personnel on this floor that we could get to help us? Um. Yeah, There's. Uh. you see a, a, a couple of nurses um, are kind of... Like, they've still been tending to the patients, but they're, like, really, they've been really, really cautious. They don't want to be super loud or give any sign that they're, like, not complying or anything like that. Um, but there there were a few that were, like, taking vitals, switching out IV bags and stuff like that. Um, and when you guys appeared, they were, like, kind of frozen, and then they realized who you were, and they kind of relaxed a little bit. Okay. All right. Okay. We're here to help. We have life flight helicopters going to come onto the roof soon. Uh Whoever can be moved, um, let's try to get them up onto the roof so that they can be taken out of here and evacuated quickly. Okay, yeah. Um, they'll start to rally every all of the, the medical personnel that they can and start... Um, any people that can safely be moved, they will move start moving them up to the roof um, to await further help. Um, there are still a, a good number of people that are going to be left behind just because they can't be moved. Um, we'll say that maybe this is an area where they are recovering from surgeries. Uh, so some people are not well enough at all to be able to move. And some of them were close to getting out anyways, so they, they'll take those guys up and, and out. Um, but you, it, it, you, you're still not able to like clear the floor or anything like that. But you get a good right. amount of people out, so that's a start. All right. And there's one more floor above us? Yeah, um, I think that they'd probably get the hint that they could start getting people to the roof from the ninth and 10th floor, since the 8th is where the bomber is. Um, so they'll they'll kind of look to you guys and be like, yeah, we'll, we're, we'll, we'll get them to the roof now that we know that that help is on the way. Okay. The people who can't be moved to the roof, can we move them in their beds up to the 10th floor so that at least they're a little bit further than the bomb? Mm, I think that that will or, still be like a, a, a certain group of people could be moved, but there's going to be some that it like it's too risky to unplug them and have to move them like that. Okay, so that just seems like poor hospital design. <laughs> <laughs> You'd usually want those people on like the ground floor, but I didn't build the hospital. No, well, it's a it's a book center. We gotta have the have the dramatic stakes. <laughs> um, not not claiming to be a hospital expert here. <laughs> what? Teleport them out? Can I? Uh, um, not it... if you can teleport all of their stuff, like their bed and their IV and their EKG and the heart monitors. And, and safely and keep those running and accurate what if i super speed and try to get the bomber out okay first we need to get down onto the eighth floor and assess the situation that's a good point. maybe that's what we yet. need to do next now that's that we've it. got eighth and ninth and tenth floors cleared yeah time to go to the eighth floor and see what's going on uh, um i uh, let's, uh, I don't know how comfortable you two are with this, but, um, 
how about we take off our uniforms, our costumes, and we put on like a pair of scrubs that maybe the nurses have? Oh, try to blend in. Well, if we come down there looking like heroes, he's going to blow up, regardless of how fast 13 moves. That is a really good point. I am okay with that. Um, I'm happy with that. Uh, Night Fox, are you happy with that? I know you've been quite hesitant with with me revealing who you are, uh, which I'm fine with, by the way. Just to let you know, I'm actually fine. You know, I'm a bit of a stranger. I get it. Uh, but I'm just sort of, you know, just making sure that you're comfortable with this. Well, I'm I'm pretty sure if I take off my mask and you see who I am, you're not going to know who I am. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. It's it's like you know a coloring book. You can color it however you want, but you don't know who that is. Fair enough. But yeah, I'm happy for this plan. So yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Chad, uh... is that cool with you? Yep. Okay, yeah, um, you guys are able to locate some extra scrubs that are just kind of somewhere in the in the building. Um, and there are there's an elevator that will take you down or there are stairs, which would you like to take? Are they both I on like the same stairs. side? Uh, the yeah, the the elevator, like the stairs kind of wrap around where the elevator goes down. I will take the stairs as well. Okay. Uh, 13 and Shadow, what are you guys doing? Part of me wants to take the elevator just to make an entrance. Same. <laughs> All right, you guys do that. All right, yeah. Uh, Kate, Night Fox, and, and Cleric are like, All right, we're, we're going to be sneaky. And they, they start going down the stairs. We'll see that 13 and Shadow kind of hang back, exchange looks, and are like, Nah, and hit the button on the elevator. <laughs> So um, as as me and Cleric go into the stairwell, I'm going to change from my costume into the scrubs. So even if, even though 13 made a big deal about my whole, uh, you know, taking the mask off and stuff like that, I might not even know who the hell I am with all the nurses that are on the eighth floor anyway. There you go. Oh, <laughs> uh, which could be detrimental or good. Um, okay. Awesome. <laughs> so we'll... We'll say that Night Fox and Cleric are able to get down a little bit faster just because they don't have to wait for the elevator and uh, 13 and Shadow held back a little bit. So Night Fox and Cleric, you reach the base of the stairs um, and there's kind of like a like a check-in lobby-ish area um, and then you can see further down that it branches off into more like rooms. Um, and this is the maternity ward. So there are babies. Oh, um, and yeah, the life forces here are pretty vibrant, Cleric, just because it's it's primarily young, young children that still have quite a ways to go. Um, you aren't able to pinpoint where the bomber is, which is probably good because shortly after you guys make landfall, the elevator ding slides open and out <laughs> stroll 13 and Shadow in their scrubs. Acting like scrubs. <laughs> <laughs> hospital business, yes, hospital stuff. Um, oh, hey guys, <laughs> oh God. I'm just gonna pick up a clipboard and blend in with the nearest nurses station. Okay. Um. Yeah, you actually, as you head to that nurses station, you see that there is actually a nurse hiding underneath it, and she looks up at you and she's like, "Who the? Who are you?" Who are you? Who are you? Get away! I, I'm 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 Nurse Fox, um, and I wink to her. This um, isn't comforting. Oh <laughs> <laughs> God! Um, we're here to help, and then I uh um, I take out of my pocket um part of my my face mask. Um, I kind of show that to her and then put it back in my pocket. Yeah, she she sees that and she kind of calms down a little bit. She's like, oh, oh, okay. 
Yeah, I see what's happening here. Okay. Um, where is the problem? The, the well, bad delivery. <laughs> the bad delivery. Uh, yeah. She'll tell you that the, the last time that she saw him, he was in room 814. Okay. Which will be down the hall, uh, right in front of you to your left. Okay. Uh, is I I whisper over to uh, Claris. Uh, eight fourteen. Is there anybody else in there? Uh, can I head that, that way and kind of get a gauge on the life force inside? Um, I'm gonna say that it's kind of hard for you to distinguish them apart just as is. If you would like to roll to unleash your powers to try to narrow down on rooms, then I will allow that. Uh, but just All passing right. by, it's very difficult. Yeah, fair. All right, I'll give it a try. I've got a cat on my hand, so this is interesting rolling. <laughs> All right, roll plus freak. I have a three. Yeah. I rolled no. double ones and then I got the plus one freak and I got a three. My dice hate me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Roll yeah, you <laughs> you are unsuccessful um in trying to unleash your powers and I will have you mark a condition and mark potential. Also, oh I forgot to tell you guys. If you guys have failed rolls, which you have multiple times, uh, mark potential for each failure. So not on a 7 to 9 hit. If you've had to mark a condition from a 7 to 9, that doesn't count. Uh, but if you have rolled below a 7, that is potential. I think I'm at 3 out of 5. Times. Yeah, I you've... must have done 2, what we thought for me. Yeah, I forgot what, that we I... needed to be keeping track of that. I uh, rolled a one condition it's a failure. <laughs> what was that? I have terrible. a condition too for my yes. bad roll. And then what was that back one? With hopeless. I, uh, I, I, I rolled once and it was bad. Yeah, so mark potential on that one. Um, yeah. And then, Cleric, you're going with hopeless? Yeah, just because I my powers don't seem to be working. I haven't been able to tell anything recently. I'm just feeling like I can't do anything right right now. Well, and, and you're trying and I can't to... Help. And yeah, you're trying to help very, very innocent people, uh, and it, your powers are not helping you in this situation. So yeah, hopeless save makes sense. the babies. Save the babies. Um, is there a room? Is there a room with like you know how in hospitals there's like a room with like these babies? Yes. Stare at. Is there a room like that yep. anywhere near us? Um. Yeah, we'll say that it's uh the the nurses station slash lounge area that you guys were in. Um it's kind of like a crossroads between a couple of different hallways. Uh cleric went down one and the one going back that way would be where the 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 babies would be held. So while Night Fox is talking with the nurse and Cleric is trying to look into the room, Shadow will see the babies and walk over to them okay be like man you are so lucky you have people who love you maybe oh um. <laughs> shadow's getting all angsty over by the babies <laughs> <laughs> don't worry guys it's only a bomb threat let me go look at the, the small children <laughs> and tell them how much more fortunate they am than i <laughs> that they are stuck in a hospital that is under threat of being blown up <laughs> yep I'm sure that's gonna help everything <laughs> uh, so i also want to ask the nurse um can uh how much how many staff are on this floor um there's probably about 10, 10 to 15 of us. I'm not sure if anybody was on break or on lunch, but that's that's about how many we have. Can, can we move um, the babies from this floor to the one above? She looks very hesitant about doing that. Just, what, I... what, if, what if we teleport? 
she also looks a little bit hesitant. She's like, "You, no, no, no offense, sweetie, but but you guys seem really young. Are you sure that you have enough control that nothing bad would happen to these babies if you tried to move them like that?" I nod and say, "Absolutely not. <laughs> That's a good point, uh, and I will shelve that idea." Um. <laughs> oh dear. Be like, how? Uh, be like Shadow, uh, don't you dare move those babies. I, I, I want to look at one of the the windows. Are you trying to look into like one of the rooms or are you trying to look outside? Yeah, once they go outside. Okay. Um I'll fix the glass. Uh I mean it's not like it's like Aegis level like bulletproof glass, but it's it's a pretty thick pane of glass. That's so probably just a standard hospital glass. Yeah. Pain. Yeah. Um... Uh, is cleric near me? Um. Um. Cleric's not too far. Cleric was just heading down the hall where the bomber is, or the okay, the bomber was last seen. Right. I throw a pen at him to get his attention. Okay. I jump. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I, I kind of beckon him over to me. Okay. And I, I kind of go closer to him instead of down the hallway where I was. Um, so I have a, I have a question about your powers. I um, may have you, an answer. Remember when you, when we saved the, the mayor, how, how bad was he hurt? And how much energy did you have to give up? Uh, pretty badly hurt. He had gotten knocked down the stairs, multiple broken limbs, some internal bleeding, just a lot. Okay. I why? I have a plan. It's it's not a good plan. But it's it's a plan. I also need thirteen's help and Shadow's help. Well, we are a team, but I want to hear this plan before we do anything. Okay, so uh, I'm in. <laughs> Great. Really? There's no hesitation. It's just like, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> okay. Um. So, thirteen, can you run while holding me in front of you? Um. Yes. Perfect. Okay, so um, optimally, I think our plan would be if you could run at super speed while holding me and push me and the bomber through the glass. Uh, what? To the outside? To the outside, yes. And then uh, um Based on my thought, he'll be scared and he'll detonate the bomb, and then I need Shadow to teleport you away from him. So I'll teleport 13 You'd away? have to teleport to 13, unless you're riding on his back, and then teleport 13 away, like, back here to the hospital. Just imagine this. Just carrying... <laughs> <laughs> Just like a lot of football. Cleric's all jealous because 13 gets to hoist Night Fox up bridal style to haul him down the hallway. And then Dude, the bomb will detonate, and then I can use my power to absorb the energy from the bomb, which I'm sure is probably going to cause some damage to me, which I need Cleric to heal me. You'd also possibly. be falling eight stories, potentially. Yeah, I'm, sure, I, I'm sure I'm fine with that, though. I mean, you I have mean, webs. You could Spider Man your way out, I guess. So we're not going to try just talking to this dude first? No. Okay. He's clearly insane. <laughs> I mean. But why did we get into the scrubs? <laughs> well, he doesn't know that we're here. We didn't want to set him off if he was standing in the hallway. I don't know where he was. Oh, uh, yeah, no, good point. Good point. I'll go back to looking busy. <laughs> <Okay>. Hospital stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Just writing on Our... the wall. <laughs> you just... okay, I haven't got any clipboard, I'm just writing. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, so we've established that 13 is down with this. Shadow and Cleric, are you guys going to go along with this plan? No! <laughs> Shadow, no, this is a horrible plan! <laughs> Shadow, what about you? I don't know, man. I, I don't think it's very wise. I mean, I really don't want to ride on 13's back. I mean, and I don't think I can just you, teleport to him and teleport. You, back. you guys could probably work out that Shadow could just position herself by the door and then grab 13 as Nightflux was chucked at that guy rather than having to teleport in, like doing multiple teleportations. Okay, okay. Since this all involves y'all and doesn't quite involve me until somebody is almost dead. Can I go try talking to him first? I'll distract them. Therefore, if it doesn't work out, y'all next plan crazy. All right. Yeah, I guess that works. Okay. We're just going to make sure he's near a window that we can go through. I'll okay. see what I can do. Okay. Wow, I'll be here with the babies. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, Cleric, are you going into that room? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go rather quietly and kind of knock on the door and take a look inside and, I guess, assess the situation. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I will hope. say, as as you open the door, you see that there is definitely somebody in there. They've got a contraption, like, strapped to their chest, and, uh, they have, like, a button in their hand. Um... And they look up and they, their thumb is over the button as you enter. Um, and then you would like to assess the situation. And I'm going to hope I roll dice well this time. Can I just add, before um, we go any further, um, I... I join up with um, Shadow if we just... get to that point, but I go with Shadow with the babies. Okay, so Shadow and, and 13 are both just looking at the babies. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. What what did you what did you roll there, cleric? I got a ten minus one, so a nine. A nine. Okay. Um. So you can ask one question. What here can I use to blank? What here is the biggest threat? What here is in the greatest danger? Who here is most vulnerable to me? How could we best end this quickly? What here can I use to defuse the situation? Um, so he, he looks really tense, like he's shaking. He, he might have, he might be thinking that he bit off a little bit more than he could chew. Um, and he's, he's not, he's scared, um, of, of what's going on. Um, so probably just trying to comfort him would probably be your best course of action, like. That 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 would be the route to go if you wanted to fuse it. Okay, uh, I come in. I've got my hands out, just holding them out, like, "Hey, hi." It, I just, I, I, I'm an intern, and I got voluntold to just check and see if he needed any water or anything. Are Are you doing okay? Um. Roll roll to comfort or support. Roll plus mundane. Um, which oh, I think I you... I got a seven. <laughs> Hang on, I think one of your conditions might... Nope. You were afraid and hopeless. Okay, uh, you got a seven? Yes. Okay. Um, so he, he hears you. Um, and he kind of... He, he doesn't quite let go of the detonator, but he kind of lowers his arm back down. Um, and takes his thumb off of the button, and he's like, um, no, I don't need anything. What? Why? Why would you offer me something? I'm threatening to blow this place up. Yeah, but I mean, you're you're still a person, and uh, this is a hospital. We try to take care of all the people that are in it, and you're a person in this hospital. So, I'm gonna try to take care of you. 
he he doesn't seem to quite know how to respond to that. He he's kind of just like dumbfounded, like you're trying to you're, you're trying to help me after I'm I will blow this building up. And he kind of lifts the detonator back up again. He's like, you better not be messing with me because I'll I'll do it. No, no, I'm not messing with you. Um, just yeah, the the head nurse kind of gave me that look too, and but. I joined the hospital to try to help people, and to me, that means everyone. Look, you seem kind of, kind of tense. Um, I, I really don't know a lot about what's going on, but do you need to talk? Uh, he... He's, like, um... I mean, I don't know, I guess things are just rough right now and there's so much going on that I thought that maybe I could just do this and you know get get out of town and go live my life somewhere else comfortably um I gotta say um this seems like a weird way to get out of town um do you do you not have a car I uh, I mean there's there's a giant dome locking us in and I don't I don't exactly have a lot of money to just pick up and leave. No, no, I, I get that. The the dome is rather scary. Not really a fan of that either. Um, it's still, a, I, I'm impressed you had a bomb, but you didn't have a car. Just that's just interesting. Um, if you would like, you could roll to pierce the mask. All right. It says plus mundane, and I got nothing in mundane. Oh, Ooh, snappers! Natural 12! Woo! Nice! That is perfect and exactly what you need. Uh, so, you can ask three questions. What are you really planning? What do you want me to do? What do you intend to do? How could I get your character to blank? And how could I gain influence over you? Which, again, is not super... Um, necessary in this situation all right let's start with what are you really planning i mean bomb in a hospital just seems like an odd way to get out of town um i mean you can take in from his demeanor that he is very like he's obviously very stressed he didn't he honestly he just didn't really think this out and he will tell you that much that he's like you know i just I don't know, it seemed like a good idea at the time, and now I'm here, and I'm really regretting doing it, and uh, I shouldn't have done it, but I, I, I can't leave, they'll arrest me, and I don't want to go to jail, so I'm just kind of stuck following through and hoping I get away with it. Alright. Um, how could I get you to put the bomb down and walk away? Uh, he would need assurance that he wasn't going to get arrested and that he could just leave and go back to living his life. Just thinking if I could uh, be like, well, I mean kind of disrupted people's day so they're gonna want a little something like maybe not life in prison but would like a year be okay are you willing to it's just saying he's he's like nope i'm not uh-uh okay cool 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 um what do you want me to do he wants you to take care of those problems but there's kind of something else and it's it's more of he doesn't want you to notice something specifically uh, about the bomb he he's kind of he's got like a jacket on over it and he's kind of been like tugging it over uh over the bomb can i notice is the bomb fake uh yeah we'll say that um you you've kind of been able to get a little bit closer to him as you've been talking with him uh the closer that you've gotten the more that he's tried to hide it but it can't really go all the way under the jacket 
Uh, yeah, they, like, there are wires that aren't even plugged in. Um, it's not, like, like, you don't know a lot about bombs, but it doesn't really look, like, thick enough to actually contain any sort of explosive. Uh, and there's no, like, receptor that would receive a, a, a like, a signal from the detonator that he's holding. So this is an empty threat. Okay. Um, got it. All right, well, thank you. It was really nice talking to you. If you if you need any water, just holler, and I'll be happy to come back down with a glass of water for you or whatnot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and head back out and because other patients, you know, on the floor that need uh, helping and everything. So yeah. it was nice talking to you. Uh, yeah, uh, th thanks, um, I guess. Uh, he still seems very suspicious of of you, but he, he kind of lets it lets it slide um and doesn't react as you leave the room thank you Kaku. i'm gonna kind of fast walk back over the nurse's station guys it's a fake bomb i still like my plan um, <laughs> <Your plan's not. laughs> you guys but, are really uh, about throwing people out of windows listen it's our <laughs> mo it's what we're known for as group four um yes so we will, uh, uh, well, I will put my mask and my gear back on, my costume. Um, all right, well, this should be easy then. Can I Does anybody have any problems with me walking over and just webbing him to the wall? Well, yes. I feel kind of bad for him now, but yeah, yep. go for it. Okay. I, I, I'll just walk in the room and I guess use my powers to web him to the wall. All right, roll to uh, roll to directly engage a threat. Uh, so roll plus danger, because he sees you walking in with the costume on, and he might not be able to to use the bomb, but he's ready to throw this. Okay, seven. Um. Okay, so you can either resist or avoid their blows. You can take something from them. You can create an opportunity for your allies, or you can impress surprise or frighten the opposition. A lot Break of choices. The window. <laughs> break the window. <laughs> <laughs> I can break glass. Can you do that? Um. Wow. I guess I would, um, let's frighten the opposition. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, you bust in there and you mean business. The mask is back on, you are back in hero mode, and this guy knows it as soon as you walk in the door. He, like, he gets up, he's, he's ready to go at you, and you're just like, pff, pff, boom, he's on the wall, he's trapped, and he's scared and he's trying to get out because he's been caught and the ruse is up all right um all right i would just uh shadow can you uh, go down and talk to chief chieferton anderson and uh tell him it was a fake bomb and he can send the the boys in blue up before that can i do something what do you want to do? The babies. I don't want to throw the babies out the window. Uh, so I close the door of the room and I just kick it back open <laughs> and walk over to the guy <laughs> and yell at them about like how dare you have an empty threat? You could have hurt these babies. Like how dare you attempt to hurt these innocent babies that haven't even lived yet. They deserve to live a life of love and happiness and how dare you attempt to take that away from them before they even know what love feels like. As as you're doing this, he's like, his his eyes are like welling up with your, and he's like full on sobbing by the time that you're done with it, like snot and everything and you see like about about crotch level with the webs is a little bit wet and dripping. Uh he's scared almost literally shitless. 
Uh, and he's like, I'm sorry. I just, I don't want to be here anymore. This, this whole thing is really scary. I just wanted to leave. I don't want to, I just want to get out of here, man. I don't want to be here anymore. I didn't want to hurt the babies. I didn't know. I'm sorry. So, or Shadow would just go tisk and like open up her pocket because she's in civilian attire now. She hasn't gone back into her costume. She pull out some cash that she got from her father as allowance and it's just like here take it it should be enough to get you out of the city just if you want to go go I, i'm just gonna stop the uh the civilian that's yelling at the bad guy right now because i'm the only one in costume i guess <laughs> um, um so, sorry sorry miss um he's going to jail he doesn't need your money and i'm just gonna move her <laughs> towards the door <laughs> Here's your money back. <laughs> Go buy a soda. Hey, Ta. Yes. Can I clear a condition, possibly? Which one are you looking to clear? Hopeless. It says fling yourself into easy relief. And now that the dude is kind of on the wall and webbed up and everything, I just want to kind of fling myself down into a chair and be like, okay, we're done. It's over. We're good. Um, yeah, so clearing that means a little bit more of, like, indulging yourself. So right. it would be, like, eating an entire chocolate cake on your on your own. Maybe you do yoga to find relief. Like, it's, you could even go to your sanctuary and meditate for a little bit, and maybe that helps you um, clear that. Like, you, you probably have a little bit of time after this that you can, you, like, while these guys are getting that situated, you could probably slip off and go. Go take care of that. Yeah. He's gonna eat all my snacks. Son of a bitch. <laughs> we don't have the snacks. That didn't happen anymore. But what? yeah, well, since they've got everything. Covered, all the snacks have done that. <laughs> I'm gonna go down to the garden. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. So just kind of give us like a brief uh what what that would look like for you. I mean, like we see like the panel of the garden. Like it, it's pretty. There's there's benches. There's not really anybody out there right now because everybody was kind of stuck in the hospital um, or they're getting as far away from it as possible. Um, so it's actually pretty empty for once. Uh, and and we see see cleric enter and and what do you what do you do? Like, are you meditating? Are you doing yoga? Are you just chilling? Like, Honestly, probably go to the bench and cry a little bit for how stressful that situation was. OK. And just release some emotion. All right. Yeah, um, you kind of just break down. That was a lot, um, especially for it to wind up being an empty threat to have worked yourself up so much over it. Um, so yeah, we have this. And my friends almost flung themselves out of a window. <laughs> it was just, yeah, a lot. yeah, so uh, we we get that that brief moment. We see we see cleric kind of sit down, slump, and we see just kind of the briefest glimpse of like. Sniff, sniff, and then we'll we'll cut away, and and cleric will have that that little bit of of comic privacy to to let those emotions out. But yeah, feel free to to clear hopeless. Um, Sweet. The rest of Good you, work. what are you doing? You've caught the guy. Are you just gonna let the the police know and just handle it from there, and then you guys go off and do your own thing again? Um. Um. I. I wanted to sort of just speak to Shadow. Um, okay. Yeah, we can definitely do some character scenes if you guys want to break off and, and talk to each other about anything. Well, I feel like when, obviously, this was going down and I was there with Shadow with the babies, I feel like I would have, like, asked or wanted to have a conversation just to say, hey, just, like, are you okay? Okay. Like, yeah, so we'll, <laughs> we'll backpedal a little bit um, while maybe this happens while Cleric is talking to the guy initially. Um, and yeah. we can do a little scene with uh, 13 and Shadow in front of the the babies, or the baby room. The babies. <laughs> the babies. So, so like, what, what's with the babies, Shadow? Just, like, something seems to be connecting with you, or... Uh, no, they're just babies are cute, I guess. You know, 
just babies, you know. So there seems to be something. There seems to be something more. Just like, yeah, they're babies. They're cute. That one, I'm not sure what that one's doing, but yeah, they're cute. Um, but there's just there's, there seems to be something, and I I don't know you very well, granted, but there seems to be more to it than just babies. No, it's just babies. If you would like just thirteen, babies. you can roll to pierce the mask. Would like if, to roll to pierce the mask. If you roll to pierce the mask, I would like to do the Mary Contrary. That says when someone tries to pierce your mask, you can interfere. Ah, okay. So roll plus superior. Was, oops. Um, I got eleven. I also got 11. Okay. Um, so, Warwick, your roll would be reduced to a 9, which would still allow you to ask one question. Um, Shadow, you... I think you already have influence over uh, 13, so you don't need to take influence, but you can clear a condition. So, I'll clear... Uh... So you'd clear uh, insecure. insecure. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you managed to kind of thwart 13's attempts to 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 break through the, the mask that you have on. However, uh, 13, you still get to ask one of the following questions. What are you really planning? What do you want me to do? What do you intend to do? How could I get your character to blank? And how could I gain influence over you? Which I believe you already have influence over Shadow, so that's not mm. significant. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, just understanding what's like, I guess, um, I guess what you really plan it in a sense that, like, just what's the deal, like, what's the deal with the babies, basically? <laughs> like, like, there's something, there's something more there and I can't put my finger on it, basically. So maybe how could I get your character to tell me about this? Oh, yeah, yeah, bigger shot. Yeah, yeah, how could I get? Yeah, how could I get Shadow's character to tell me basically what's the connection with babies? Have they lost someone? Have they lost a baby? Have is there a connection there? Or yeah, just to get an idea of their character, okay. especially with their father being who they are and stuff. And just I'm trying to see some good in Shadow. Um, and also the fact is, um, I think with my um, where is it? Um. Relation, uh, relations seeing in my future or my present, yeah. seeing Shadow take to turn away from the hero's path. So, this is me trying to sort of find out and hopefully keep them on the path, basically. Gotcha. Okay, so Shadow, how could 13 get uh, you to open up to them about um, why the babies are so significant? I don't know. I'm blanking. Um, I mean, is there something that they could, like, is there a phrasing that they could use to get you to open about it? Is there something they could bribe you with? Um, if they, like, got you away from everybody and took you to a more like sequestered area where it was just the two of you would that help like what and what scenario would shadow feel more most comfortable opening up to someone uh definitely if they were like alone like if it was just two of them and like no way of anyone on the outside seeing the inside of the room you know okay like, probably one of those uh, breakout rooms that I think people have. Like, a church kind of room that they have in the hospitals where uh, people can go if they've, like, lost a baby. So I think those rooms exist. Okay. Um, yeah, or, or maybe just, like, a janitor's closet. 
just yeah. something with like no windows and something that people wouldn't easily get into. Um, and windows, yeah. Yeah, so 13, you get the impression that if you were able to get Shadow somewhere where people couldn't easily walk in on you and where they couldn't see you, um, that you could maybe get Shadow to open up to you about why why the babies are so significant to her and why she's been standing over here this whole time. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I'm like, hey, look, you know, if you want to talk somewhere else, I'm more than happy to. It seems like um, uh, Claric and... Um, Night Fox seems to be handling it. Um, I'm glad I'm not throwing myself with super speed out of a window. So, you know, I see that as an absolute win already. Um, but yeah, if you like, if there's somewhere you want to talk more in private, I would happy, like, I want to help where I can or just understand more. Um, yeah, I will say that there is, um, there, there's like a, a relatively spacious janitor's closet nearby. Um, that you guys could slip into pretty easily. Um, so we'll say that you guys head in there, uh, shut the door, make sure there's like a lock on the inside because normally it's it needs a key to be unlocked, but it it stressful situation the door was ajar, so you guys just went in. Um, so you're able to lock the door. Um, there's no windows. There's no there's like a tiny little vent up in the ceiling, but like there's not gonna be anybody in there. Um, so it's it's pretty secure. So Shadow looks down, or just plays with her fingers a bit. Well, see, those babies, they have someone to love them, and they probably have a mother or something, you know, because it's how babies are made to have a female pop one out. I don't know. Uh but I don't know. They're loved by someone and I'm not. I sort of look down sort of trying to get eyes eyes sort of like see the eyes of, of shadows and just say why do you think you're not loved? Where's your where's your where's your parents? Uh, so, I've been told by the servants that work for my father that my mother died during childbirth, um, so I never really knew who she was, and my father never really paid any attention to me he's never even told me that he loves me so doesn't love me just I'm sure he loves you he's he's your father regardless of what he may may not be he's still your father yeah but everyone else's fathers they there's just so different. He's he's like he doesn't even want to acknowledge that I exist. It's like I'm just a thing to him. I'm not his child. I I'm like a burden to him. Like if if I if I never existed, then his wife, my mother, would still be alive and. It would have been better. You're not a burden to us. You know, granted, I'm not being with you guys very long, but we seem to work well together. Um, you do kick doors very well. Um, and you care. Which is a great quality. You know, you just, I could see it when you're in front of these babies, just how much you're passionate about this and... Yeah, things may have not gone right in in your life and your father, as much as what he's doing is wrong, I don't think that's a reflection on you. And regardless if you get love from him or not, that shouldn't 
determine who you want to be and who you are. You are part of group four, as we've named ourselves, um, and matter to us. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> At this point, there will be like tears coming from Shadow's eyes. And she'd like crack a small smile, which is very abnormal for her since her uh, neutral expression is very stale and no expression. Just says thank you. And then she'd give him a hug or give 13 a hug. Just a light, awkward hug. I hug back and say, don't worry, I won't tell anyone you smiled. <laughs> um, 13, will you roll to comfort or support? So roll plus mundane. Uh, yes, absolutely. Plus mundane, oh god. Is that, is it, can I, can I sacrifice something to re-roll? <laughs> what, did, what did you get? Who? You. Who? You got a two? A two. I got a three. I got minus one in mundane. Two. <laughs> we'll say that if someone redeems... Helps me out. <laughs> I can't even see him because my OBS is all messed up. Oh, God, what's going on there? Oh, it's back. it should be back. It looks back. Yeah, no, it's the... I can't see the... Uh, if somebody redeems, pick which character I'll play. Uh, on the kernels, then I will allow that reroll. Someone that isn't one of the players. Uh -oh. <laughs> Wait, <what? laughs> oh man, I was just about to do that. Jesse got yeah. you. Thanks, Jesse. All right. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, nine. Okay. Perfect. Um, <laughs> Thank you. much, much better. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so Shadow, you can either mark potential, I don't think you have any conditions to clear, uh, or yeah. you can shift your labels. So that would mean like moving up, um, you could move up like freak and lose superior or something like that. So you'd basically just be moving Ooh, wow. points around a little bit. Um, or you can mark potential, which I think you've marked at least one already. Yeah. Um, so that would put you up to two. Once you hit five, you get to take an adult move or something along those lines. Um, or unlock your moment of truth, stuff like that. So. Okay, I'll mark the potential. Okay. Alright. Um, and if you guys wanted to expend team to make that a 10, uh, you could also clear a condition 13. I'm easy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, what I like... Need to do? Well, it would Is be more on thing? it would be more maybe on Shadow if Shadow wanted to kind of reciprocate that, which I mean you kind of have by opening up and and stuff like that. Um, if you wanted to add another one to that that role, yeah, I'll give my team point to thirteen. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I mean, you guys have this this genuine moment, which I mean, especially for you, thirteen is a pretty big deal because you. You haven't really gotten to know Shadow very well, and the Shadow in your future is not a good person. So to see Shadow opening up like this is a very good sign. Um, so you take comfort in that, and you may clear a condition. Uh, be afraid. Okay. I think that makes sense. Cool, cool. Uh, a little more hopeful. All right. Awesome. Um... So yeah, you guys have that conversation, and and maybe that's part of the reason that Shadow winds up storming into the room um, once Night Fox has disabled the enemy um, and is kind of even more fiercely protective than we we saw them when they were just outside by the babies. Um, and then we will jump back. 
to the future. We have Cleric in the Sanctuary. Um, we'll say that you guys have alerted the police, so they are coming up and, and taking care of the guy. Um, people on the roof that hadn't already been evacuated are coming back in. They're they're getting everything resituated, but you guys aren't really needed anymore. Um, and as you, as you start to leave, because this has taken a while, like, you guys... You had to do a lot of planning, a lot of sneaking around. Um, Tons of planning. Yeah. So it's it's getting later. It's getting later. And suddenly the clock strikes, we'll say, like, 7 p.m. And uh, that white light flashes again. And you are back once more at the start of your day. You see the dome once again reappear, blotting out the sky. Your comms go crazy again, listing all of the same things. The bank robbery, the uh, the bomb, the ship, the... Um, what was the other one? Shit. The bank? <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the bank. bank. Yeah, the bank, the bomb, the ship, um, and the monster. The lighthouse? That's the ship. Yeah, oh, the no, ship. that's the ship. And then Sorry. at the end of it, that same voice comes over demanding that all of Alpha Industries' weaponry be destroyed or the city will suffer. Cleric, you see once again that your teammates and the people around you, their life force is a little bit dimmer once again. Um, and you start over, and I think that that is where we will leave it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Good game, but I'm just like, what is going on? What is going on? Hee <laughs> <laughs> hee. Can we? We have to pick this up. We have to keep. Pick, we have to do this again. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have to. Yeah, we we can talk scheduling. Um, after we're done, but uh, there are some questions that we need to talk about uh for the end of the session. So everybody, we'll start with we'll start with Backlund this time. Um, Night Fox, how do you feel about your relationship to the team? Do you think you grew closer? Do you think you have grown more into the image of yourself, or have you grown away from the team? And explain why. Well, now I have to explain why. <laughs> tests, tests, tests suck. Uh, I choose option. Uh, Q. I didn't realize an actual test. <laughs> I know, right? Um, <laughs> So I, I guess Night Fox uh, grew closer to the team because she took more of a leaderish role during the hospital thing. Okay. Um, and she was more um, working with the team in that capacity. And before even the the, the first iteration of time, um, worked with Cleric and trying to figure out what we should do and gave insights into how the whole blackout thing Okay. Um, so, who do you think made you feel the most welcome on the team? Um, well, I initially for Night Fox, she was probably thinking Cleric in in the first iteration of the the time loop, and then in the second one, he didn't like the plan at all. But thirteen loved the plan. Um, so <laughs> I will I will say it, it, it probably I was went on board back before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so okay, so if you don't, if thirteen, if you don't already have influence over Night Fox, mark influence over Night Fox, um, Ooh. and Night Ooh. Fox either clear a condition or mark another potential. Uh, I don't, I don't have any conditions. I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'll mark a potential. Okay. Um, all right, 13. Do you feel like you grew closer to the team? Do you think you grew into your own image of yourself, or do you think you grew away from the team? Uh, definitely grew closer to the team. Okay, uh, so then who made you feel the most welcome? Um, I think it was all equal, really, but I guess because me and Shadow sort of we connected, sort of found out more about. I found out more about Shadow. I feel like probably Shadow. Okay. Uh, Shadow, if you don't... I think you all have influence over 13, but if you don't, just mark that. Um, and then go ahead and clear a condition or mark potential 13. It's up to you. I think you still have insecure uh, if you want to clear yeah, that. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Yeah. Okay. 
Perfect. All right, Cleric, same questions. Do you think you grew closer to the team, grew into your own image of yourself, or grew away from the team? I think I grew into my own image of myself. Okay. So why just, why do you think that? I took kind of control of a situation where there was a plan that I didn't like and put myself in harm's way to try to save a whole bunch of people Perfect. and talk somebody down with a bomb threat. <laughs> Which was terrifying, but <laughs> <laughs> all right, was good. yeah, that was good. All right, uh, so shift one of your labels up and shift one of your labels down, and tell me which ones you're shifting. Ooh. Um, I think I'm. Do I have to have reasons or just? I mean, it, it should probably make sense. I think for for this case, I would say um, you could move up your mundane since you're starting to relate to people a little bit more and maybe lose danger or freak. Because um, your powers haven't been super helpful, but you just doing what you do has been great. And you haven't really come across as a threat, so danger would also make sense to drop. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do plus one to mundane and minus one to danger. Okay, perfect. All right, and Shadow, do you think you grew closer to the team, grew into your own image of yourself, or grew away from the team? I think I grew closer to the team. All right, and is that just because of your talk with 13? Does 13 the one that you would say makes you feel the most welcome? Yes. Okay. All right, uh, 13, if you don't already have influence over Shadow, go ahead and take that. And then Shadow, feel free to clear a condition or mark potential, which I don't think you have conditions, so probably mark your potential. Yeah. All right. Well, we will have to figure out when to pick this back up. Uh, this was great fun. Thank you guys for doing this and participating. Um... And yeah, let's go ahead and go around and uh, we will sign off of the masks. Hopefully you guys are sticking around for some more community games, though, because we're still going. We've got, uh, we're almost down to like five more hours. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, five hours, 15 minutes. <laughs> woo, let's go. Uh, all right, we will start with back one again. Just go around, tell us who you are, where we can find you, um, and if you've got anything cool coming up. Uh, I am the back uh, You can find me on Twitch. You can also uh, find me on Twitter as the, with two E's, back and on Instagram as the back lives. So many people take my name. Um, and I stream a variety of games, post different things. Um, and on Twitter, I just kind of promote everybody else, not my own stuff. All right, Warwick. Um, yeah, um, I'm Warwick, Warwick Zero on pretty much everything, mainly on Twitch. Um, yeah, I do the things. Um, I make them look good. <laughs> I'm really good with words and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I've got a new YouTube video out. It came out earlier today. So if you want to check that out, check out my YouTube, same, same name, Warwick zero. Um, but yeah, if not, you see me on Twitch or you see me in, in Tuff's channel or wherever you find a British bearded man. I'm going to finish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hatter. Well, it's hard to follow that up. <laughs> um, I'm no hat Hatter, and I can be found nowhere, um, but usually in Tuff's Discord, if not Jesse Bess's Discord. And yeah, see me next time on Masks. <laughs> All right, Sin, take it away. Hi, I'm Sin, or Potato9 underscore Juice on Twitch or are not comics on twitter and instagram also are not art on instagram and sinsama on discord uh, i'm a mod for tough on twitch and i occasionally stream on twitch taking a break but hopefully to stream again at some point in time maybe I don't know.
<laughs> I do have a, a YouTube channel that is under the name of Titania Creates. So I'm very confusing with a whole bunch of different names, but yeah. Awesome. All right. And I am 98 Tough Love or Tough, Torf, Torfleton, various other variety of nicknames. Uh, you can find me here at the 98 Tough Love channel, which, hey, congratulations. Right you found it. You did it. You're <laughs> already here. You don't have to click on a link or anything, but you could click the follow button if you don't already follow just to make me I, feel I good. It's a trick. Yeah, it's a trap. I got I got that one here for like over a year now. So, <laughs> yeah, I can't, Sucker. I can't leave. <laughs> <laughs> no way in. No way out. <laughs> um, I am also trying to be more active on Twitter, also at 98 Tough Love. And I am, uh, yeah, I am back. I am streaming again. I took like almost a month long break on accident because I didn't need to take that long, but work sucks. Uh, but we're back. Today's four year stream anniversary, and uh, hopefully, we are able to get this back on track soon with masks because this is a lot of fun and I am enjoying myself very much. It was a lot, it was a lot of fun. I'm um, glad you guys liked yeah, it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Um, and actually, while we're here, can I just sort of say, um, just put on under four years? Uh, that's a huge amount of time. And I know I've only been a part of what a quarter of it um just every stream you do is fantastic and the community is amazing and you inspire me and i think you inspire a lot of other people as well so just well done tough oh thank you there you go <laughs> you so wholesome shit for you <laughs> <laughs> um wholesome <laughs> i know right i mean um balls yep warwick and balls <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. I, I appreciate it. I mean, like, a, a lot of people haven't been here the whole time because I started streaming to nobody, but um, it's it's pretty astounding how far this community has come, and I, I wouldn't be doing this without you guys. So big, big shout out to the community, uh, big shout out to the mods, especially, and especially to Warwick, who helped me kind of figure out how to put all this shit together, because I was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do for four years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think you out of this. Uh, I just make it up and go along and most of the time it seems to hold up hold together so i mean it worked um and if you guys Ooh, yeah. <laughs> would like to see more D D content or more just tabletop rpgs in general you can go check out the c plus content channel um which also has youtube at c plus content where you can go watch the vods there should be more recently some mask spots so if you would like to watch another version of this you thought it was cool uh then by all means please go check that out um and then i will also be over on c plus content in a couple of days for uh, a labyrinth tabletop rpg which should be fun we are gonna go visit the goblin king and do Ooh, all nice. sorts of stuff, so it should be good. Um, nice. But Will yeah, be singing? Um, I don't know. Probably not. I'm not prepared to write a musical number. I think Meg's in it, so Meg might sing. Me Meg, and, you me, be Meg. Singing, Meg. <laughs> me, me and Meg will do a duet. <laughs> um, I really look forward to the alien one. Yes, I am also looking forward to the alien one. Hopefully, we there's start. Like, there's one space. Soon. If anyone wants to join, you know, do it. Come on, you could be Sojourney Weaver. Sexy. I joined, but I'm already there. It's <laughs> yeah. a beautiful three months tough. Thank you for being the wonderful, amazing person that you are. Thank you, hon. And I, I also kind of need to take a minute to shout out everybody that did stuff while we were doing this because it's it, a little bit difficult to run the campaign and also properly thank people for um, subscriptions and stuff. So um hipster thank you for the follow damn thy boy thank you for the follow waffles thank you so much for the 18 month resub juice thank you for the 19 month resub dedicated thank you for the 200 bits your butt face geo bearer thank you for the prime resub i'm not sure what i'm doing i don't know <laughs> this is hype <laughs> this is <hype. laughs> i promised crazy that i would chill on D D until the 23rd well to be fair alien isn't planned yet so you totally could still sign up you mm. just don't have to actually participate True. for a little bit um but yeah uh thank everybody again massive shout out to the players uh you guys have a massive hand in this so thank you for moving the story along your rp moments were great i'm loving the characters this is just fantastic 
uh, and I look forward to doing more with you guys. So, uh, we are going to move on and play some other community games. Uh, oh, shit. Also, a uh, big shout out to Juice, who has sent me some skin codes for Stream Raiders. So, I will be doing giveaways in just a minute for a couple of Stream Raider skins, if you guys are Damn. interested. Does this mean you're done holding stream? Oh, I forgot to run it. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, kid. <Kenton. laughs> it's fine. <laughs> um, I, like, I'm, I, I won't say anything. I won't say anything. Uh, no, it's fine. <laughs> um, so I think up next, we're maybe going to look at playing some Spaceman. Uh, that is a free game. It is like Among Us, but you shoot the monster, um, which is pretty fun. So if you guys are interested in that and you don't have it installed, it's not very big quick install uh would love to have people come play uh and then we'll go from there on other games but thank you guys for playing uh i will see you guys soon bye bye but also bye. streams are ending don't yeah, leave the stream yeah, yeah don't, don't leave don't the stream leave. we're not done there's we're gonna play community <laughs> games this was just weird we're timing because we had to put the masks in the middle it, it's fine don't worry about it uh <laughs> don't worry about it uh, all right, I will see you guys in chat.